So hello guys welcome me back to my channel. What if Naruto was trapped into harem dimension in fairy tales? Movie. Hey, Aero Senen, what's up with this big scroll on your back? Naruto asked Jiraiya as he glanced up at the said object on the Toad Senen's back, what's inside? It has been few hours after they leave Kanahagakur for the training trip. It's a giant ceiling scroll. Jiraiya replied boringly as he studied the map in his hands and inside are a lot of jutsu, ranging from your basic jutsu to forbidden jutsu, fuinjutsu, lessons, weapon suppies and etc. Really, the blonde shinobi's eyes lit up as he hopped up and down, what jutsu are we gonna learn first? A giant fireball thing that Sasuke Tem use. Wind barrier. Water ball thingy. Super jutsu that can summon meteor from space. A meteor summoning jutsu. Don't be so ridiculous, gaki. The Toad Senen rolled his eyes with a light snort, the first thing you will train with is, he paused, mastering the Toad Summoning. What? Naruto blinked several times before he squirted his eyes at him, but, Aero Senen, I already mastered it, remember? No, you have to learn how to summon a certain Toad for a certain task. Jiraiya replied, then when you get it down, you will start working on your Rasengan. You need to use it without your clone's help and we will start building some variety moves around this jutsu. I can get them down in no time. The blonde boy crossed his arms with a small grumble, glancing at the giant scroll. Then I will learn a lot of awesome jutsu and beat Tem then drag him back to Konoha. Three months out on a trip and nothing. Naruto sat on floor in a hotel room with crossed arms, no kick-ass jutsu, no fancy shits. Just bunch of stupid summoning and Rasengan over and over and over, he looked around in an empty room, and this fucking Aero Senen did nothing but stealing my money to spend on some hookers or peeping in hot spring every single fucking day. The grumbling blonde threw his hands up, Jiraiya just took his money and ran out few minutes ago for, the best time of his life ever, or something like that. When he come back, I'm gonna get, him with, he slowly trail off when he noticed the giant ceiling scroll on right bed, a prank, oh, sweet. He forget this scroll. He immediately picked the scroll up and he was about to open it, only to halt his action, but I better get myself hide in some place where pervy sage can't find me. That was not the first time Naruto tried to take scroll from Jiraiya for some jutsu and Jiraiya always foil his attempts every time until now. Some place that is not in forests, he rushed outside with the scroll. No, nah, nope. Naruto walked down the street as he tried to find a good hideout to avoid Jiraiya for a prolonged amount of time and it went on for a bit while until he come across a rundown building. An abandoned library. He stared at dangling signboard for few moments, perfect. He'll never check this place out. Naruto immediately run inside and head to the back, he don't bother to check the place out as he duck in between two aisles. Now let's check out what we have here. Naruto stretched the scroll far out with wide grin until he accidentally knocked something off the shelf and it land with a hard thud. Huh. He looked down to see a thick black dirty yet elegant book lying on torn paper tag as it opened up to a random page and he swear the pages were glowing in dark. What the heck is this book? He reached down to pick it up out of curiosity but something strange happened. A large portal suddenly pop out from the book and it suck him inside before he can react then the book closed with a snap, revealing its title. The collection of fairy tales from around the world. And there was a footnote paper sticking on bottom. Warning. Magical portal can pop up at random time if open, please be careful and close it immediately if any pages start to glowing. If trapped inside, go see the magic mirror, and do not change anything in the tales or bring anyone back with you. Somewhere in a clearing within a dense forest, Naruto fall down to the ground with a cry as a portal spit him out then it vanish without a trace. What the fuck? Naruto quickly sit up as he clenched the scroll to his chest while looking around alertly, and where the fuck am I? On this day, the fairy tale world will never be same again, thank to one number one unpredictable genin who ruined everything in many different ways. Somewhere back in Naruto's world, Jiraiya race inside the hotel room with a high-pitched scream as he slammed the door behind and lean on it. Oh Kami. I don't know it was a trap. Cute but still trap. He panted heavily, Naruto, lesson of the day, always start with the groin first, don't make out first, he paused as he look around in the empty room, Naruto. Where the heck did this gaki run off to? 
Naruto wasn't sure where he is in middle of the dense forest and the first thing he did after a little freak out was, reading the scroll for any awesome jutsu and other things. Ooh, you can make cage bunch and bomb. Naruto perked up at a summary above a seal, cool. I'm gonna start with this one first. He was about to unseal it until he hears something rustling near him, following by a startled gasp and the blonde turned to the direction of the source with a raised eyebrow. Naruto quickly rolled the giant scroll up as he get up then lightly jogged toward the voice, maybe this person will tell him where he is and if it's arrow senin, he'll run for it. The genin finally come across something and he froze right away because, there is a big fucking wolf and it was getting close to a civilian girl around his age. Oh, my, the girl gasped. Good day, the giant wolf grinned. Rasengan, huh. The wolf blinked dumbly before a sphere smashed down onto its head and the girl watch on as a blonde boy crushed the creature's head down on ground, grinding its skull to bloody pulp. The blonde turned to her with rapid panting, Hey, girl, are you okay? Naruto take a good look at the girl in front of him. She have a long shag red hair that reach her shoulder blades with couple fringes, thin red eyebrows, big doe brown eyes, pale skin that make her red lips stand out and she wear a long red cloak with hood over white dress that end at her shins and pair of brown leathered boots with gold buckle. She was also carrying a large wicker basket with red and white checked blanket. Oh my, I am fine. The girl placed an index finger on her lower lip as she stared down at the headless wolf's twitching leg, but I can't say same for this poor old wolf. Poor wolf. Naruto gestured at the headless creature, this thing was going to eat you. Oh. Really? The girl moved hand up to her mouth to cover a gasp, was he? Please don't tell me she's naive. The genin sweat dropped at her innocent tone, starting to feel worried for her. I should thank you for saving me then, the redhead stared at him with a hum, um. Oh, I'm Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto introduced himself, call me Naruto. What's your name? My name is Rosie. The girl smiled kindly before she tapped her cheek with a thoughtful expression. Your names sound very unique, do you come from somewhere far away? Yeah, I'm from Kanahagakur. The genin nodded and the girl just blink at unfamiliar name but she don't question it. So, um, what are you doing out here in the woods? He glanced around to see if there are any trails. I was on my way to my grandma's house to deliver the foods and drinks from my mother. Rosie gestured to her basket. Want me to accompany you until we get there. Naruto see it is a good opportunity to find out where he is. Yes, I would like that very much. The redhead smiled brightly as she take couple skips ahead of him, please follow me. The genin don't know why she is skipping like that before she suddenly stopped to look around with blinks, oh dear. I just realized that I am lost. She turned to him as she tapped her chin then point behind him, did I come from this way? Her pointing finger shift to her right side, or this way? Or was it this way? A. Hey, the gobsmacked blonde dropped his jaw at ditzy redhead. I am very sorry. Rosie blushed embarrassingly with hands on her red tinted cheeks as she sit in front of campfire and Naruto was setting up a large tent that he find in the giant scroll. They have been wandering in the woods until the nightfall and they ate some foods from the basket, her mother would understand Rosie kept said every time they took a bite. It's okay. Naruto said over his shoulder, it can't be helped, and you did say that we're going the right way now since you finally find a landmark. Ah, yes. The redhead pointed to a large tree, I recognize this tree, it has a funny marking of an old grumpy man in a large broken branch near its ear. It'll take half of a day to reach my grandma's house. Old grumpy man. The blonde turned to squirted his eyes at the tree's barks and the redhead giggle quietly, he looked like a fox to her with this expression. Oh, I see it now. He chuckled lightly before he give the tent a check over then he toss couple sleeping bags inside, okay, all done here. Oh goody. Rosie clapped with a smile, but you know, I'm surprised that you know magic and have some interesting things like this, sleeping bag. Magic. Naruto sat down in front of the campfire opposite of her with a raised eyebrow, it's not magic, it's chakra. And you never have seen her use a sleeping bag. What is chakra? The redhead tilted her head questioningly and the blonde take some time to explain it to her while she ask him couple questions before they turn in for a night. What both don't know is that Rosie have make a mistake, she have never seen this landmark tree before and they were very far away from both her grandma's house and hometown. We're lost for good, aren't we? 
Naruto can't help but to deadpan at the embarrassed girl as she refused to met his eyes, they're still in woods for about three days. I'm so sorry. Rosie muttered quietly. It's fine, he sighed wearily, let's stick to one direction and keep going until we reach a village or any place then figure it out. Sound good to you? Yes, I agree. She nodded as they walked together through the woods, I don't know what to ask you about yourself. She said to her companion, they have covered a lot of basic information about each other from likes to dreams and some more. Naruto was honestly surprised to find out that she's same age like him because she was a head shorter than him. Um, same here. Naruto scratched his head and they kept walking for a while until they sudden hear a frightened shriek. Come on. He ran toward the scream and Rosie tried her best to keep up with him. They almost immediately reached the source and Naruto spot a girl tried to back away from three bears. Naruto quickly leaped into action with a new jutsu he learned. I I I'm sorry. The girl cried to the bears, I won't eat. Kanai cage bunch and no jutsu. Dozen of kanais strike the side of a little bear, killing it immediately. My BA, the female bear shrieked before a blonde genin ram a kanai down into the bear's crown with enough force to kill it and her right eye pop out. No, the giant male bear screamed as Naruto twist himself around to shove a Rasengan into the creature's opening maw before its head explode in bloody rain and the genin land on ground. Hey, you okay? Naruto spun to the girl as soon as the headless bear topple over backward and he get a good look at the girl. She have a wavy chin length golden hair, blue eyes, light skin, brown freckles under her eyes and she wear a blue dress with white apron like cloth, blue ribbon headband, white socks and pair of black shoes. Blarg. The golden haired girl threw up and Naruto quickly take a step back to avoid the splashing bile with a grimace, some pieces got on her shoes. Here's the water. Rosie handed a cup of water to the golden-haired girl as the genin sealed the three bear corpses into one of empty storage scrolls, drink it slowly. Thank you, the blonde girl took it before she take a sip from it, ah, it's lukewarm. Do you have different water? Um, no, we only have one kind of water. The redhead blinked owlishly before she clear her head with a head shake, my name is Rosie and he is Naruto. What's your name? I'm Goldilocks. The blonde girl replied before she turned her head to Naruto, what did you do with the bears? I sealed them inside a scroll. Naruto answered as he sealed the scroll back inside the giant scroll, now we don't have to worry about meats for a while until we get out of here. Meats. Goldilocks blinked couple times before she pale at her realization, don't tell her they'll eat. Oh, do you know a way out of here? He asked her, we've been trying to find someplace like towns for days. Don't ask me. The golden-haired girl took another sip of the water, I've been in the woods for days now and all trees look same to me. Great. Naruto dropped his head with a sweat drop before he lift his head up again to look at the girls, do you want to rest for a bit or go now? Let's wait a bit more then we go. Rosie turned to Goldilocks with a cheery smile, since we're resting, shall we get to know each other a bit? Tell us your likes, dislikes, hobbies, dreams and so on. A. Goldilocks blinked oddly at her. Cage Bunshin. Naruto created three clones to set the campsite up once the sun set and Rosie start to pick up some twigs and fallen branches as Goldilocks plopped down on a log with a heavy huff. Finally, Goldilocks massaged her legs with annoyed expression, what are we going to have for supper? I don't know. The genin rubbed his chin, I think we have some leftover in Rosie's basket and I have to check the scroll to see if there are any foods or rations. If not, then we'll have bear meats too. B B bear. The blonde girl's face turned green before she take few deep breaths to settle her stomach down, wait. She turned to him with a blink, you, you don't know what's inside your magic scroll, beside few things. It's not magic, it's fuinjutsu. Naruto muttered before he scratch his head sheepishly, and, um, no. You see the size on this thing. I'm not gonna stretch it all out then roll it up. It'll take all day to do it. The giant scroll is pretty huge by the size of a full-grown adult, he think, and he don't want to find out how far it can stretch out to, maybe a mile give or take. Well, Goldilocks give the giant scroll a look over, you're not wrong. But what if there's something useful inside for us? Like a warm soup that's just right for me. Just look through it whole for once. Ooh, are we checking inventory? Rosie brought the woods over to them then she placed it near the campfire, let's. 
I'm curious to see what come out of your scroll and what marvelous items I have never seen before, like this sleeping bag. Sleeping bag. The blonde girl raised her eyebrow at the redhead oddly. All right, we'll do that. The genin glanced at the scroll, after my training. I'm gonna master this bunch and bomb. Bun what bomb? Poor Goldilocks felt so confused right now. I'm going over there to practice. Naruto pointed to West. My clones will stick around until I come back. Okay, I'll try and start the fire. The redhead waved to him with a smile. Have a good time with your training. The genin waved back before he take off, leaping across the tree branches to the gaping blonde girl's shock and the humming redhead kneeled down to arranging the firewoods, already had seen him do it couple times before. Somewhere in the woods, a man was running as he pushed the low-hanging branches out of the way because he was chasing a girl and the chase end when the girl trip over a tree's aerial root. The girl turn over on her back with widened eyes as the man raising a dagger above his head and Bunshin Debakua. A voice called out in a distance. Wah. The man barely raised his eyebrow in confusion before he got blindsided by a mysterious explosive, flung him to the left in front of the white eyed girl. All right. The girl turned to a voice to see a blonde boy stepping out with a wide grin as he pumped his arms high up in air. I did it. His grin dropped right away along with his raised fists as he blinked rapidly at the half-scorched man as the smoking man weakly attempted to get up. Um, I mean I didn't do it. Crap, I am so. Oh, thank you. The girl cried out from her position, thank you. Thank you for helping me. Wait, what? Naruto turned to her with another rapid blinks and the man finally get up with his dagger up above his head. Die, you, the man screamed before he slipped forward and his eyes widened dumbly when he stupidly lower his arms in attempt to balance himself, only to accidentally stab his own neck with the dagger fatally. He died almost immediately right before he hit the ground with a thud in front of the slack jaw genin. Did that just happen? The genin muttered, he was worried at first because he thought he accidentally kill someone, relieved that the man was still alive then bewildered when the very same man end up killing himself by pure bad luck. He quickly remembered there's a girl before he turned to her, hey, are you okay? Why yes, I am. The girl nodded with sniffle, just a little hurt from a nasty fall. The girl appeared to be around his age, she have straight ebony hair that reach her back, snow white skin, black eyes and red lips and she wear a white floor length dress with long sleeves. The girl turn her head away from the body, seeking you, please carry me away from here. I I don't t think I can get up or walk right now. Oh oh, sure. Naruto quickly create a single clone to bury the body before he scoop the girl up in bride carry as he move away from the location. Um. I'm taking you to the camp, is that okay? Yes, I'm fine with that. She nodded with another sniffle, wiping some tears off her cheeks. I'm Snow White. And you are. I'm Naruto. He answered, can you tell me what happened? And by any chance, do you know how to get out of woods? The huntsman was trying to kill me under my stepmother's order. Snow whispered. Wah. Naruto dropped his jaw at the first sentence, why is your stepmother trying to kill you? We need to tell someone about that and have her arrested. We can't because she's the queen. She muttered and the blonde's jaw went farther down. I I comma I can't go back, see can I stay with you? Heck yeah. He nodded firmly, until we figure out what to do with your evil mother, you're safe with us. He make a promise to protect her like the other two girls and he didn't notice Snow's cheeks become bright pink. Here, Snow. Rosie gave Snow a bowl of meat stew with a smile as they sit around the campfire. The girls introduced each other while the genin managed to caught three rabbits for the meat stew couple hours ago. Thank you, Rosie. Snow accepted it with a kind smile. Ah, it's too hot. Goldilocks complained after a sip, she was glad it's not the bear meat. Can you give me another bowl? Just cool it off. Naruto rolled his eyes at her and her response was just a huff before she blow her bowl few times, eating it as soon as it's at right temperature. Once the genin finished his dinner, he take the giant scroll up and he unroll it. All right, let's see what we got here. Wait, I want to see it. The redhead quickly put her bowl away then takes a seat next to him as she lean close, their shoulders touch each other. Okay, go ahead. So far we know we have 10 empty storage scrolls, a campsite setup, kanai cage bunshin no jutsu and bunshin debakua jutsu. The genin unrolled the scroll a bit. What does this one say? 
Rosie pointed at unfamiliar symbols quizzically, and what language is it? I've never seen it before. You don't know kanji or Japanese. Naruto blinked at her owlishly as she shook her head, oh. Um, he cleared his throat as he turned back to the scroll, maybe he'll try teach her to read and write it later. Well, this one say cage bunshin, a kinjutsu because it take up a lot of chakra and, he suddenly went quiet as he pushed his head closer to the scroll with a rapid blinks before he cried out in shock while the girls jumped at his shout, I get their memories and experiences after they dispel. Exclamation mark. He quickly read the details, it say he can use his clones for training and complete any jutsu in short time, depending on the amount of his clones training but it come with a price, mental feedback. Three clones max, but it don't apply to himself since he's a jinchuriki, why don't anyone tell me that? Wait, does pervy sage know that? Why don't he say anything and make him work by himself? I'm gonna get this pervy sage back really good. He grumbled under his breath with twitching eyebrow, all the training wasted because of this damn pervert bastard. Are you okay, Naruto? Snow asked him concerning. Ah, I'm fine, just surprised about something. He replied before he mutter under his breath, and plotting to get back at pervy sage. The blonde cleared his throat as he turned his focus back on the scroll, anyway. We get chakra papers, chakra control lessons, oh, ten more storage scrolls, he read them out loud as he went through the scroll, he's very exciting when he found out that there are a lot of jutsus from basic to S ranks and there were few things that he don't understand. Why is there so many different weapons? Naruto gestured to many piles of weapons along with each weapon instructions that he had unsealed out of curiosity, or why there are so many crafts. Exclamation mark. He shifted his gesturing arms to a large pile of scrolls, at least there are survival crafts that may help him in long run like skinning animals for example. Scrolls for books. And the clothes. The clothings. Why does Aero Senen have so much clothes and labeled them in each scrolls? Exclamation mark. He furrowed his eyebrows at another piles of clothes scroll and it was pretty massive, good thing some are labeled. Armors, but he still don't understand why there are so many scrolls compared to everything else, and what the fuck is, nasty lingeries. Exclamation mark. It don't occur to the genin that the Aero Senen is a quite collector and was using them as trades for his spy networks or research. Ah, at least we have many storage scrolls, fuinjutsu sets and foods. The foods was one thing that Goldilocks celebrated loudly because she don't want to eat anything, not right. Naruto, that. Rosie pointed at something, are you planning to use it? That what? Naruto turned to her with a raised eyebrow before he followed the line of her pointing finger to a certain pile, you mean the bows. He picked one of bows up, a simple wooden bow, along with the arrows. Um, I don't know. Let me test it out. He turned to face a tree far away from them and tried to aim at it, knocking the arrow up with one closed eye and sticking out tongue. Hem, he pulled the string back then release it and the arrow flew, way past the left side of a tree and into the darkness. Let me try it one more time, he made another attempt but it zoomed past the other side of the very same tree and bit higher. Damn it, one more try. Naruto channel some chakra into his arm as he pulled the string back again then release it, only to have the arrow fly far high up in the sky and disappear from their sight. Everyone stare up at the sky for few moments before the girls slowly lower their heads to stare at the only boy and he turned to them with embarrassed blush and bit furious expression. No, I don't think I'll use them, ever. Then may I have the bows and arrows. The redhead can't help but to giggle at his funny face. You want to learn how to use them. The genin tilted his head at her with a surprised blink, why? Yes, I'm a bit interested in them. Rosie steeped her hands with a smile, and I want to do my part a bit more to help you. She stared at him hopefully, may I? Sure, you can have them. Naruto shrugged, he doesn't think he'll ever pick the bows up at all after his little embarrassed exhibit. Yai. The redhead suddenly glomp him with a tight hug, thank you, Naruto. Um, no problem. The genin blushed at her action and he don't know that Goldilocks and Snow were staring at the little red riding hood enviously to some small degree. No one among the group have ever think of a question, which is where will the arrows land? A brother and sister were walking quietly at night with the sister in front as they tried to find some warm place to sleep and the young boy stopped for a bit to ease his sore legs. In a single blink, an arrow bolt strike into the side of his head and the boy's body tumble sideways, 
and into a deep burrow hole that is hidden by the tree's roots, all without a sound. The unwitting sister continue walk for few minutes until she look over her shoulder to see nothing but woods. Brother, where are you? She called out worriedly, looking around and she backtrack a bit as she kept searching for her missing brother then take a detour off the path. A merchant walk away from the wagon cart to relieve himself as the horse lazily eat the grasses and the man sigh out in content while urinating into a lake over the tall cliff. All of sudden, a arrow stab into the back of his skull and the merchant fall forward over the cliff into the lake. It was a quick and painless death. The loud splash alerted the horse and the creature look around for its owner before it decides to take off in a random direction. The third arrow flew for a while far in a starry night above the woods until it slowly fall downward and it went through several branches, and into the heart of a man that was riding a white horse. Gah! The man coughed bloods out in shock and he weakly raised his trembling hand up to the sky while holding the arrow as the blood steeping through his hand. BB but I haven't. FF find my princess, WW with beautiful, VV voice, the man, who turn out to be a prince, slump backward dead as the unaware horse keep galloping on through the woods. Back at the campsite, Naruto was waiting outside the tent while the girls are picking out their own sleepwear. Why does Pervy Sage have 15 set of same clothing each or have so many sleepwear scrolls? Exclamation mark single quote. The genin scratched his head bafflingly, he swear there were about a thousand different clothings and that was just from four. Sleepwear, scrolls that the girls picked out from about 20-something sleepwear scrolls. Well, good thing there's male clothing scrolls. He glanced at his black t-shirt and orange pajama pant. It's really lucky that he have his favorite goofy sleephead and Gama Chan wallet on him along other things. Naruto, we're decent now. Snow poked her head out through the tent flap, you may come in. Thank. Naruto entered the tent and the first thing he did was just looking around. Snow, in a simple white long-sleeved nightgown that end at the floor with some lace trimmings, was standing by his side with a timid smile and she was playing with her hands timidly for some reason. Rosie, wearing a red wool cap and red floor long nightgown with short sleeves, was kneeling on floor as she put her folded clothes away in her basket, which was already empty, then place her boots next to it and he noticed there are two more folded clothes with black shoes and slippers near the basket. Goldilocks, wear a baby blue ankle long nightgown with short sleeves, crawl into a sleeping bag. Too cold. Goldilocks crawled out with a shudder then she get inside the second sleeping bag with few squirms, too hot with all this furs. She got out then get in the third one, ah, just right. She sighed in content, enjoying the warmth and the feeling of new yet unfamiliar smooth material. I'm starting to think gold's a spoiled brat. He deadpanned at the blonde girl's antic with a sweat drop as he ignored her, hey, cry. Yes, and quite provocative. Snow placed hand on her cheek, showing her ankles like that, that earn a weird look from Naruto before he shake it off, assuming it's her own weird way of thinking. The ravenette turned to watch the genin as he walk over to the sleepwear in a corner, resealing them back in the scrolls right away since they were folded and on top of the opening scrolls. Um, Naruto. She did a little sway when her foot draw a small circle shyly under her gown, how do I look? The blonde looks up to her with a confused blink. You look nice. Naruto answered lamely and Snow's face lit up with a big smile, he don't know why. Let's go to sleep. I'll put the lamp out. Hello. A voice called out somewhat nervously outside with an accent as everyone looked up, is anyone in there? Stay here, I'll check it out. He said to the girls as he walked toward the entrance and he step out to see a nervous girl around his age. The girl have a light brown hair in twin long braided pigtails that reach the middle of her back, blue eyes and fair skin and she wear a dull green dress with white puffy shoulder sleeves, long skirt of same dress stop a bit above her shins, some kind of black vest and pair of dirty brown boots. I I I'm sorry to bother you, good sir. The brunette stuttered, H have you seen my B brother? W we have B been lost in woods and I I I'm afraid we accidentally got separated a while ago. You're lost too. Naruto widened his eyes, what's your brother's name and where was the last time you saw him? H H his name is Hansel. The brunette sniffled with some shudders, A and the last time I saw him was in this direction a mile away from here. I I think I may went the wrong way, she shivered again when the cold breeze wash over her and he notice it right away. It's cold outside, you should get inside. 
He jabbed his thumb to the tent over his shoulder, I'll send my clones out to look for your brother. The girl looked confused by his sentence until she scream out in shock when the genin create 20 clones of himself and she become more shocked when the clones took off at a swift speed. I I I is that MMM magic. The brunette stuttered, can't comprehend what she just witnessed. Why does everyone keep saying it's magic? Naruto gently nudged the girl toward the tent with a tiny sweat drop, no, it's chakra. I'm Naruto. You are. GG Gretel. The stunned brunette barely utter it out before they get inside the tent and her body welcomed the warmth right away. She almost noticed the girls right away and they stare back at her curiously. That is Snow White, Rosie and Goldilocks. The genin gestured to them then shift his arm to the brunette, girls, that is Gretel. She said her brother is missing and they're lost, too. My clones are looking for him right now. Oh, my goodness. Snow approached Gretel right away with hands on her shoulders, you poor girl, look at you. Shivering like a leaf. Come with me, we better get you inside the sleeping bag for comfort. SS sleeping bag. Gretel asked with widened eyes and puzzlement expression as the ravenette push her toward a sleeping bag with Rosie's help and the genin summon another sleeping bag. She's very worried about her missing brother that she barely get any sleep this night. The morning has arrived and Gretel exit the tent, rubbing her red eyes before she look around at her surrounding. Snow was tending to a metal pot over the campfire and Goldilocks eat her breakfast at her own pace with sleepy half-lidded eyes. Rosie was practicing with her bow, shooting at a tree from a short distance and the brunette see three arrows sticking in the trunk and several arrows lying at the base of the tree. Gretel spot Naruto tying broken branches up and she quickly approach him. Excuse me, Naruto, have you find my brother? Gretel asked worriedly, wringing her hands. I'm sorry, not yet. Naruto shook his head at her with a frown as he stood up to face her. My bunshins have been looking all night in a mile radius and bit farther but nothing. They don't find any tracks either. Then my brother is dead. The brunette dipped her head sadly. Whoa, whoa. The genin widened his eyes at her completely flabbergasted, you can't write him off like that. Just because we can't find your missing brother does not mean he's dead. It's only been barely a day. B but, Gretel muttered softly, the woods are dangerous at night. A and he was all by himself, he's. Hey, don't think like that. Naruto waved his hands, I'm sure he's fine and well. He'll turn up sooner or later, who know. Why you think so? She whispered. Yeah. The genin nodded rapidly, tell you what. After we clean up here, we'll go back to the last place you saw your brother then search for him. Okay. Okay, thank you. Gretel nodded slowly. Is that the place where you last saw him? Rosie asked Gretel as the group reached the trail path for the first time. Yeah. The brunette pointed down the trail, we were coming from this way. Her pointing finger shift to opposite direction, and we were walking in this direction. What do you think we should do? The redhead turned her head to the genin. Um, Naruto glanced around in all directions, let's see, the way we came from is out because we'd run into Hansel if he was taking this route, he scratched his head as he looked up and down the trail then ahead into the woods, so that leave us three options. I'll use cage bunchons to go in two routes and we'll take the last one. I think we should go this way. He pointed up the trail. Why? Goldilocks scrunched her nose up quizzically, if she was going this way with her brother then backtrack, why don't she find him? What if he decides to turn around and go back to wherever they came from? Or he was taking a little break to go a bit off the trail for nature call and they miss each other? He said and the girls stare at him confusingly, what? Why would the nature call out to him? Snow asked. Um, so he can go. Naruto blinked. Go where? The ravenette tilted her head innocently. Go, as in go go. The genin make a chopping gesture with his hands, you know. The confused girls kept staring at him, toilet. Oh, ooh, eeu. Goldilocks groaned in disgust while the other girls gain understanding looks. Eh hey, anyway, what do you all think? Naruto cleared his throat embarrassingly, go this way or do anyone want to go different way? We'll do what you suggest. Gretel muttered and the rest agreed before the genin create a dozen of cage bunchen, sending them out then go on their way. A very elderly blind woman shuffle around in a dirty room, grumbling to herself as the hunger pangs annoy her to no ends until she went silent as soon as she hear a voice outside. Holy, is this house made out of foods? Why is it all out here? 
The woman can hear some more voices talking with each other, it sound like there are five of them. Oh, goody. The woman rubbed her hands evilly as she licked her lip greedily, she's going to eat well for months. She need to wait first so the children can eat piece of her house and she'll go out to lure them and then keep them captive. The woman want to laugh at her genius plan but she need to stay quiet. Maybe we can eat some. A young girl's voice asked and the old lady nod rapidly, licking her lips. The elder shuffled close to a large cauldron to make sure it's clean while she ignore the discussion outside. Let me check if anyone's home before we do anything. A boy's voice spoke, hello. Is anyone inside? Hello. I don't think anyone have been home for a long time. Another girl's voice replied, look. There is awfully lot of cobwebs on this water pail and other things. Oh, good eye, snow. The boy said as the grinning woman bent down under the cauldron to feel the firewoods, oh, don't worry. I'll give one more call for confirmation, hello, anyone inside. The woman just ignored his shouts as she continued to check the firewoods, all right, everyone, move back. I'll bust it up, Rasengan. Ross. The woman twisted her torso slightly with confused look and right arched brow before everything explode and the cauldron crush her down under its weight. Okay. Naruto stood up as he brushed some icing off his shoulders before he summoned dozen of cage bunshin, go collect and put the foods inside a scroll. Roger. The clones get to work right away. Naruto, why did you do that? Goldilocks gave him and look with fists on her hip, we should have go inside and salvage anything that we may use or need. Um, the genin paused for few moments before he scratched his head sheepishly, whoops. Idiot. The blonde girl huffed annoyingly, what if there was a perfect soft bed in there and he destroy it with his magic orb? Boss, there's some mummy lady under the big pot. A clone shouted out. Say what? Naruto turned around with a bewildered face before he and the girls gather around to stare down at an elderly woman. Do you think we, Goldilocks said a bit nervous. No. I don't think so, Snow looked unsure. Yes, I mean, Rosie twirled her right hand up in air, look at her. She look very old, ancient old. By over hundred years. Maybe she died before we come across this house. Must be. Gretel agreed meekly, there's a lot of dust and dirt so. Yeah, she probably died from old age. The widen-eyed Jenin sweated a bit, she looks so much like a mummy and no one alive would look like that. They stare at ugly flattened face of the elderly woman for few moments before they all agreed she was already died a long time ago and Naruto summoned two more clones to give this old lady a burial far away from the destroyed house. I can't believe we found a vase full of treasure. Goldilocks drooled over the shiny gemstones in a wide large vase, she wonder how rich she is right now. She pout when Naruto seal it in one of his scrolls, no. I want to look at them more. Look at them later. Naruto deadpanned at her, just help us out. Naruto, can we take this table? Rosie pointed to a wooden low table, it's sturdy and big enough for us. I found some blankets. Snow held a bundle of blankets with pillows on top of it. Um, I collected all utensils I can find with plates, cups and bowls. Gretel carry the water pail, filled with said items, with both hands. We may have to wash them out first, um, is that fine? She don't know if they need these things but it don't hurt to try. Yeah, that's good. The genin nodded as he seal everything inside the scroll before he look at the blonde girl, gold, get to work. Ah. The blonde girl blew her hair up annoyingly, grudgingly picking random things up while the rest shift through things. The journey resume once again as the group walk through the woods and it was pretty quiet. Naruto decide to glance around up at sky but it's mostly blocked with the leaves and branches of trees and the only way to see it is to, oh. Naruto suddenly stopped in middle of the trail to smack his forehead as the girls behind him almost clash him with some stumbles, I'm an idiot. Ah, uh, yes, like we don't know that. Golidlocks gave him a flat look with arched brow. What's the matter? Rosie bounced with a tilted head. I forget about the tree climb. He groaned to the girl's confusions, I should climb up to treetop and survey for the edges of the forest. But isn't it too danger for you to climb all way up to top? Snow looked up at the trees worriedly, there are not a lot of low branches and she don't know how he'll get up there and down without hurting himself. I'll be fine, don't worry. Naruto flashed her a foxy grin, I'm gonna walk up. Stay here, I'll be right back in few. He jogged toward a tree with thick trunk, and up the tree as if it's a ground. 
The girls stare at the act of denying gravity in shock until he disappear from their sights under the leaves. What's next? The blonde girl muttered, walking on water or breath fire. The group just stand around, waiting for the only boy to come down. Rosie, may I ask you something? The ravenette looked at the said redhead. Yes, what is it? The little red riding hood turned to her. Is Naruto, snow fidgeted with her hands as her cheeks turned pink, your, true love. My true love. Rosie corked her head with index finger on her cheek as she hummed softly, I think he is. Oh oh, the ravenette uttered with slight downcast expression. Do you love him too? The redhead asked her with a smile. W.H., Snow stammered before she gulped timidly, um, yes. It's not in her nature to lie, but you. Oh, that's wonderful. Rosie clapped her hands with a cheery expression, mother always say once you find your true love, your happy ending will come. But there's only one for every person, the ravenette pointed out. Say who? The redhead tilted her head innocently, I heard some people have more than one true love. What she doesn't know is that it only applies to the royalties and in some regions of certain countries. Isn't it great? We both have same true love. She pumped her fists with a wide smile, let's get along and do our best together for him. W wait, are you suggesting what I'm thinking you are? Snow stammered few times as she stared at the smiling redhead bewilderedly before she slowly clasped her hands together in front of her waist while stare at dirt timidly, yes, let's. Maybe it won't harm to share him. She hate to fight with someone over anything and want everyone to be happy. What about you, Goldilocks? Rosie turned to the said blonde. WW what? I it's not like I think he's my true love or something. Goldilocks crossed her arms with flustered blush before she turned her nose up, HMMPH. Oh, okay. The redhead turned to the last girl of the group, Gretel. I just met him last night. Gretel replied flabbergasted and the little red riding hood just shrug her shoulders before they hear a noise getting close toward them. Up with Naruto, he reached the top of the tree then look around at the sea of green and the first thing he saw was a tall tower in a distance. He blinked few times with raised eyebrow before he squirt his eyes in attempt to see farther and it looked like that the forest end few miles past this tower but he don't trust his eyesight since it's too far away. Maybe we go to this tower so I can get a better look to make sure. Naruto jumped back down on the ground, I'm back. I found, he paused with few blinks, is that a horse with wagon cart? He stare at a large black heavy warm blood horse, a big plain four wheels wagon, half full with some sacks and boxes, was attached to the creature. The girls were gathering around it. Yes, it is. Snow gave him a nod as she stroked the horse's mane gently, poor thing said she's ownerless something happened to her master. Really? Naruto gasped, then we should go help this master, the horse cut him off with a neigh. She said her master is good as dead, the ravenette looked at the horse, oh, that's awful thing to say. Wait, Snow. The genin blinked puzzlingly, you can, understand animals. Ah, yes, somewhat. Snow replied, I can understand what animals are conveying but I can't speak their languages. That's if they're not talking animals. Goldilocks commented offhandedly as she went through the sacks as if it belonged to her. Ah, I see, Naruto uttered, not sure what to say. Hey, can we keep her? Rosie pop up behind the wagon on her tiptoes, and the wagon too. Since there's no owner now, it'll be okay, right? Well, the genin admit it's handy to keep the horse and cart so they don't have to walk all the time and can have easy access to get any items from the cart instead of opening and re-roll the scroll for a item over and over. Yeah, sure, let's keep them. Um, when you went up there, Gretel turned to him as the redhead cheered, what did you see? There's a tall tower in this direction. Naruto pointed to northwest, and I think I may find a way out of this woods, but I must be wrong about it. Oh. The brunette hummed, wondering why there is a tower way out in the forest. Do anyone here know how to drive the horse? The genin glanced at the creature with a head scratch. I like to give it a try. Snow said as she climbed onto the coach box and the rest of the girls get inside the cart. The ravenette become a little flustered when Naruto sit down next to her and he give her a direction as she politely order the horse to walk. Wow, we hit jackpot. Goldilocks grinned like a madman as soon as she opened a small wooden chest to see it's a money box and full with coins. Coppers, silvers and golds. 
She scooped some coins up with a greedy giggle as they slipping through her fingers back into the box, whoever this owner was, they sure travel a lot around the lands. She have noticed some foreign money inside. Oh, now we don't have to worry about monies for a while now. Rosie looked up from sack of carrots and cabbages with a smile and Naruto have completely no idea why they look glad about coins instead of Ryo. Um, what else are there in back there? Naruto asked. We get a shovel, hand axe, small dagger, lantern, two buckets, ropes, Gretel looked around then she peeked inside the sacks and crates, um, fruits and vegetables. Eggs, some rugs, clothes, fabrics, threads, needles, animal pelts and furs. Candlesticks and stands, chests from small to large, woods. Pots. She lift a small bag up with a raised eyebrow, a small bag of beans. Um, she put it down, a old fishing rod. Jewelries. The blonde girl shrieked giddily as she lift a necklace and bracelets up. Oh, we get three pillows. The cheery redhead announced after she moved some sacks around. Ah, hand mirror. The brunette continued, chains. A old birdcage. Some animal traps, I think, she looked through more, shoes, wheels. And that's it. She looked up to Naruto, um, if we empty them out someday, shall we keep the crates and sacks? Yeah, we can reuse them. Naruto nodded before he sweat drop along with other girls when Goldilocks laughed crazily when she find more gemstones, definitely a spoiled girl. Hey, Goldilocks shot him a glare with pout. They have reached the location of the tower the next day and the kids craned their necks up to stare at the tall building. That's one tall tower, alright. Naruto whistled before he raised his eyebrow at something else, but why is it surrounding by thick thorny bushes? The bushes are so huge and thick that not even a bear can get itself out and he thinks some thorns can kill someone at right angle. Wait a second, he made a circle around the base, where's the door? How can someone get inside this tower? Or is it just in decoration? If there's no door, then are you going up the same way you did with the trees? Gretel asked. Yup, I'll be right back. The genin take a mighty leap then stick onto the wall and run upward to the girl's amazement. Unknown to everyone, Naruto's run have somehow dislodged some stones slightly in process. Ah, I'm so bored. A girl sighed into her hand as she stare out the window from her table with books around her, I did everything I can think of in this stupid room. She don't know how long she have been in this room for. Three years. Four. Honestly, she lost track of time as days and nights passed. Ah, she slumped forward on the table with a groan until she hear something, a running footsteps and it was right outside. The girl look up with an arched eyebrow before someone ran up past her window to top, wah. She bolt up with widened eyes then she run toward the window. Oh, yeah. Naruto pumped his fists up when he see the end of the forest not far away, away out of this damn forest. He may grow up in a village hidden by forest but he don't like this forest because people keep getting lost and attacked by wild animals every single day. Someone need to put warning signs up around this woods, or a fence. Let's go and tell. Hello. Excuse me. He heard a holler near him and he looked down to see a girl sticking her head out to him with widened eyes. Oh. Is that your place? The genin slide down next to the window and the girl cast a widened eye stare at his feet. Is that a magic spell? She asked. No, it's chakra. Naruto dropped his head with a sigh. Um, what are you doing out here? The girl asked after a couple moments. I was using your tower as a lookout to see if I'm right about a way out of the forest. He replied, now we're going to leave. Why you're leaving now? Her eyes widened, if he leave then she'll be still trapped in this tower and regret missing her chance to escape this place for the rest of her life because, w wait. Can you take me with you? Huh. Naruto blinked rapidly at her, why? I had been abducted by an elder woman and she keeps me here. The girl spoke quickly, I don't know how long I have been in captive for. Say what? The genin dropped his jaw, some granny is keeping you hostage. Why? For what? I don't know. She bit her lower lip, can you please help me escape? Hell yeah. Naruto nodded with a frown, there's no way he'll leave her here with good conscience. Lovely. The girl ducked back inside with a squeal, give me a minute to fetch my things and the rest of my hair. The rest of. The puzzled genin looked inside before his eyes widened with dropped jaw when he see her full appearance, we need to get you a haircut. He muttered to himself. 
Having a good look at the girl, she have green eyes, pale skin as if she haven't been out in sun, a very long golden hair and she wear a white full body flowy dress and appear to be barefoot. Her long hair was what make her stand out because it was so long and Naruto swear it's about 70 foot long. Nice to meet you, everyone. The girl with long hair smiled as she sat in back with her hair coiling around at her feet, my name is Rapunzel. Nice to meet you too, Rapunzel. Snow smiled over her shoulder as she drive the cart through the woods, it's quite fortunate that we encounter the tower and rescue you from an awful fate, thank to Naruto. Yeah, it's a good thing I did. Naruto nodded before he turned to the long-haired girl, you sure you don't want a haircut? No, I like it long. Rapunzel hugged her hairs like it's her own child with a pouting lip, no cutting my beautiful hair, please. Then how about we braid it up for you? Gretel asked. What's braid? The long-haired girl asked with interest. You can't blame her for not knowing about hairstyle because she have been cooped up in tower for who know how long and lack a lot of knowledge about the world. That. The brunette gestured to her own braids, may we do it with yours. The long-haired girl nodded eagerly, Rosie, Goldilocks, can you please help me braiding her hair up? Okay. Rosie immediately helped her with a big smile and Goldilocks joined, muttering something about hair taking up too much room in cart. Back at the tower, a elder woman in purple dress approached the building and she give out a loud call. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair that I may climb thy golden stair. The sorceress waited with a sweet smile and it slowly turned downward as time goes by. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair that I may climb thy golden stair. A pause, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, she shouted with red face before, against her best decision under furiousness, she start climbing up the tower barehand, is this brat sleeping in again? Exclamation mark, when I get up there, I'll whip her bum red. She climb and climb until she was halfway up the tower, grr. Her hand reach out to grab the stone ledge and before she know it, it break off. The sorceress, eyes widened as she fall down and she give out an blood-curdling scream, twisting around in air. The last thing she saw was the thorny bushes before everything become black, and cold. A long thick thorn have pierced her main arteries and she bleed out to her death as her body scrawl out across the bushes. The thorny bushes turn red this day. Finally. Naruto cheered with several girls as soon as they reached the edge of woods two days later and into a wide plain with hills in distance, were out. He also have created several clones to stay behind in woods, with enough chakra to last two weeks, to look for Gretel's missing brother. Yes, thankfully. Goldilocks pulled a stray twig out from her hair with a huff, now what? Now we find a nearby village and figure out where we are. He replied. Oh, if we find a town, can we stay at some lodge? The short-haired blonde asked, she's dying to sleep on soft mattress instead of hard ground, although the sleeping bag makes it less discomfort. Maybe, Naruto said over his shoulder and the group enjoy the clear weather as the wagon traveled down the dirt path, to unwittingly ruin more fairy tales and lores. It has been one week on the road since they leave the lost woods, dubbed by Naruto to some girl's amusement, and during this week, Naruto learned two Doden Jutsu, Ganchuso and Dori USO, in short time, thanks to Cage Bunch and Shortcut. But instead of moving on to the next one, he practiced these said Jutsu until he was able to get them down on his own. While they were on moving, he passed the time by reading some survival crafts. At same time, Rosie have been practicing and improving her archery skills. She was able to get 5 out of 8 shots when she used a single tree as her target, of course it wasn't perfect since the arrows were all over it. How far away is the town? Goldilocks lie on the floor spread eagle with bored expression as she stare at the moving sky. I don't know. Naruto rolled his eyes while reading scroll on skinning animals for resources, you asked us that for, he paused to count mentally. 15 time. Snow answered for him. 15 time. The genin repeated to the short-haired blonde, why don't you go count coins or something? I did many times. The short-haired blonde sit up to plop her chin on top of a medium crate with a groan and there was nothing but silence. How far away is the town? One more time, Naruto growled with rapid twitching eyebrow, ask one more time and all. He grumbled under his breath and the blonde girl stare at him annoyingly before a smirk form on her lip. How far away? Goldilocks grinned challengingly and she was about to finish her question until someone cut her off with her name. Goldilocks, can you help me fixing Rapunzel's hair? 
Gretel tied some of Rapunzel's hair in a large five-strand braid, it came undone on own. Um, but you, Rapunzel glanced up to the brunette in the corner of eyes before the brunette shush her with a small whisper, oh. Yes, I think I accidentally caught my hair on some crates. I'm coming. The short-haired blonde moved to the long-haired blonde's side and she helped Gretel fixing the braid. Naruto, I think the sun is going to set soon. The ravenette took a quick glance at the sun with squirted eyes before she turned to him, do you think we could stop here for a night? Hmm, Naruto looked around before he pointed to a spot near the edge of woods, yeah, let's park over there and set everything up for tonight. Holly, time for break. Snow smiled down at the horse, she decides to name the creature Holly several days ago because she feels bad for calling her by animal name. It took few minutes to set the campsite up and almost everyone start their tasks. Gold, go chop the firewoods. Naruto pushed an hand axe into Goldilocks' hands. What? Goldilocks looked offended, why can't you do it? Everyone have to do their parts. The genin crossed his arms, I pitched the tent, Snow does cooking, Rosie does a little hunting and gathering, Gretel unpack and pack stuffs. What about Rapunzel? The blonde girl pointed to the said girl. She fed Holly and give her water. Naruto replied as the long-haired girl held a cabbage up to the horse. Rapunzel did bit of everything, sometimes she'll switch chores with another girl because she want to try everything as much as she can. Now, chop, chop. Ah, I hate you so much. Goldilocks stomped over to the firewoods with a whine. Yeah, yeah. The genin walked away with a eye roll, he don't regret forcing her to work because she have been slacking off for days until today and it don't feel right to him when everyone were helping out. He picked the giant scroll up then he take a chakra paper along with instruction, have been curious about it lately. Chakra paper is made from a special type of tree that is grown and fed with chakra. When one channel a chakra into this paper, it reacts according to the element affinity. It's common to master two natures and nearly impossible to master the rest of, hmm, Naruto narrowed his eyes at the impossible part, challenge accepted. He shook his head clear before he read the list of reaction and element. Let's see, Naruto lift a paper up then he channel his chakra into it, the paper split in half. Cut in half, I have wind affinity. So that mean I'll have easy time with futon jutsu, and it's rare. He grinned widely, now he know which next jutsu to learn. My arms are so sore. Goldilocks moaned as she sit on a log with dangling arms, I can't lift them up. She swing her arms back and forth few times, ah. She stared down at bowl of stew on grass, I'm hungry. The rest of the group was eating their dinner at their own pace and she's envious of them at the moment as her stomach grumble. Stick your head in there and eat it. Naruto joked with a head shake, putting his empty bowl down. Naruto, feed me. The short-haired blonde glared at him, that is all your fault so you better help me out here. Okay, okay, drama queen. The genin rolled his eyes. What did you just call? Goldilocks gawked before Naruto suddenly stick a spoonful of stew inside her mouth, causing her to eat it. Happy now. Naruto removed the spoon from the short-haired blonde's mouth to scoop some more up from the stew. Stop speaking. The blonde muttered with a healthy blush before she opened her mouth again, allow the genin to feed her with no knowledge of the meaning of his actions while the girls stare at them with different reactions. There is some disturbance, which is quite worrisome since it's supposed to know everything. It sends a magic portal pop up after a long time but it don't dwell on because it vanish as soon as it come, then it become worried. Why? For what? It don't know, there's something in its imaginatively guts. It's as if a magic fog have been casted upon the world. Oh, that mean one thing, there's an outsider. When was the last time one come to this world? A hundred year ago. Or was it a millennium or two? Ah, it hate when the outsider come because it block its sight from everything and make it lose track of time. And to make it worse, the longer an outsider stay in this world, the more likely that a magic portal can open up anywhere in this world at random and teleport a folk character to another place by accident. The last time it happened, the big bad wolf was teleported from the little red riding hood to another side of this world where he end up eating a shepherd boy, which led to the birth of the boy who cried wolf fable. Because of that, many shepherd boys have been killed every time someone read this fable. Yes, not pretty sight. Not to mention the, gifts, and few other things that the outsider have that no other folks have. 
Changing one's destiny or the stories is one thing but these abilities and possible side effects. Ah, so ridiculous and unfair to some who's unfortunate enough to encounter the outsider. It pray that the outsider is a normal human. It's more easy to clean the mess up. Unlike these unique individuals who force itself to create a new tale to prevent panic and a certain event from occurring. A. Let's hope the outsider read the pervious outsider's warning and make his or her way to it so it can send the outsider back to wherever they come from. It's not like this outsider will go mess the stories up and create or destroy tales in process. Ha. Huh. Ah, the evil queen is calling it again for same old, same shit, question. Shame it don't know all answers right now because of the outsider until they show up in front of it. Meh, it'll lie. The evil queen is so stupid enough to believe anything it says. It was very late at night when Naruto woke up by a familiar urge and he quietly sneak out of the tent without waking anyone up, quickly create the clone to stay guard. Nature call. Naruto sleepily walk few foot into the woods then relieve himself and he catch a quick blue flash in the corner of his eyes after he finished up, causing him to turn his head with a sleepy blink. He see a faint light of lantern moving across the woods and he decide to approach it. He don't know who is it but he have to check it out to make sure, what if it's Rosie. She's pretty horrible with directions, so horrible that she almost make everyone turn back to the lost woods when she take over the coachman's position for few hours. Hello, anyone there? Privet. A feminine voice called back with an accent before the figure step out as they met each other and Naruto look up and down her with sleepy blinks. The figure turn out to be a girl, around couple years younger, and she have a long platinum blonde hair tied in a long braid ponytail that went over her right shoulder, blue eyes and pale skin as snow white. She wear some kind of white apron like dress with long sleeves over blue long sleeve dress with red accent and pair of straw shoes. You're lost, aren't you? Naruto asked groggily, if so, you can stay with us. Yet, I'm, the young girl glanced down at her dress with a pause before she look up with a nod, da, I'm lost. I'm glad you find me by pure chance. Same here. The genin beckoned her over to follow him as he muttered under his breath sleepily, what's with girls and woods? He glanced back to her, I'm Naruto. Vasilisa. She replied as they walked together back to the tent and they quietly enter, the young girl glance around at the sleeping girls in sleeping bags. Here, Naruto causally fetch another sleeping bag from storage scroll to the girl's amazement before he gave it to her, grab any empty space and go to sleep. He crawled back inside his sleeping bag then went straight back to sleep. Okay. Vasilisa blinked once, twice then thrice before she chose a place to lie down. Her eyes roam around at her surrounding and she slowly close her eyes. Baba Yaga don't know why she decide to go out in the dark woods at night, was she supposed to do something? Should she just go back to her mortar? No, wait, she need to do something first, wait, why does she have to do it? What was she supposed to do? Look around, wait or go back. When Baba Yaga start to questioning herself, she slowly seep into an existence crisis. Why am I living in a dark wood, in a small mortar? Why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? Baba Yaga went on a long ramble as she clutched her temples in despair, what is her story? And it's pleasant to meet you all. Vasilisa said to the group after an introduction and some conversations as they set out for the journey. The girls were confused when they wake up to find the young girl among them until Naruto told them about last night. Same here. Rapunzel smiled and the others said the same thing in their own response. May I ask where we are going to? The young girl asked. We're trying to find some places like a village or town. Gretel replied, then we'll figure out what to do next at this point. Ah, Vasilisa hummed softly before she noticed something, you have Z fabrics. By any chance, do you have sewing set? Ah, yes. The brunette gestured to a small crate behind the young girl, it's inside this crate. If you need a scissor, I'm afraid you have either wait until we come across a store or try your luck with dagger or knife. Then I'll wait until we buy Z scissor. The young girl replied. If you ask us that, does that mean you're good at sewing? Rosie asked. A little. Vasilisa said, I want to become a maker of cloth. The group has their own conversations and getting know the new girl a little better. Village. Naruto cheered as soon as the group spot a village in distance, they have spent almost a whole month on the road. He's dying to find and eat ramen. 
I hope they have lodge. Goldilocks prayed, I need a bath, so bad. And don't forget stores. Gretel added, we have to buy some foods and necessities. There were few other stuffs that everyone want to get for their own reasons. We'll find out when we get there. Snow smiled. Yeah, what she saw, the genin noticed something by the small river near the road, and Scorpion was approaching a frog. Hold on. Naruto pull his kanai out, quickly flick it at the creature and the scorpion give in death screech out as soon as the kanai embedded deeply in its head. What the hell? The group heard a voice cried out in shock and they look around confusingly as Naruto receive his kanai, there was no one in sight. Little did they know that the voice come from the frog that Naruto just saved and the creature jump into the water to get away from the danger. Now where was I? Naruto returned to the wagon, oh, yeah. What she said. It took an hour until they reached the village and the genin noticed something strange. The building style looked so different and so foreign, some were made with stones, woods and some have straw roofs. The villagers have different clothes with covered shoes and some have weird hats. What the? He looked around at his surrounding with odd look and some villagers also give him a strange look as they stare at his orange jumpsuit. Maybe I should ask for a map. Did this weird portal teleport him far away from Hai no Kuni? Oh. I believe I see a shop over there. Rosie pointed at a small building with many stands, managing by an old man who was puffing away with a bent tobacco pipe. And a butcher shop over there. The brunette pointed her finger at an open space butcher shop across the street. Excuse me, sir, is there a lodge or any kind around here? Snow asked a passing man. No, none of these around here. The villager said curtly. No, Goldilocks cried. I'm going to this shop. Naruto looked at the girls, anyone want to come with me? Rosie, Vasilia and Rapunzel went with him. I'll pull Holly up next to the butcher shop. Snow informed the Genin's group as the rest stay on the cart while Gretel pass a bag of coins to the boy, it'll be much easy for us to load the meats. Meet us there when you guys are done. Get it. He hollered over his shoulder as his group approached the shop and they look around while the Genin walk up to the old man. Hey, get any maps. A map. The old man puffed few times as he looked under his table before he toss a map on it, here's one. Naruto take one look at the map and his eyes widened slightly. He don't see any familiar landmark, names or anything that resemble his land and this map only show a unfamiliar land. Um, do you have a bigger map? Naruto lifted his head up to the old man. Bigger as in world map. The owner took a long puff, no, only that. If you want it, that'll be three coppers. Um, the genin took some copper coins out to pay him as he come to conclusion about the portal incident, did I get teleported to another side of the world? Exclamation mark single quote. He screamed mentally, that explained everything. No wonder why the girls act like they never have heard of chakra, act weird around sleeping bags that they never seen before, the way everyone dressed, the way they look at him in the village, that was a dead giveaway. Why doesn't he realize it until now? It's quite miracle that he's not freaking out in public at the moment while the girls carry on merrily. In the end, they bought three scissors, five hairbrushes, few mirrors and a carving knife from the old man with one silver and twenty coppers before they joined Snow's group. We're back. Rosie put the bag of purchased items in the cart as her head turned to the other, what did you guys get? We get pork, ham, loins, beef, tenderloin, four whole chickens, steak, roast and venison. Gretel gestured to a crate full of wrapped meats, we will have Naruto seal them in his scroll later. It's for two reasons, to save more room and to expand the shelf life of foods. Naruto once explained something about suspending stasis in storage scroll to them but they don't understand it either way. Wow, that's a lot. The redhead gasped. Indeed. The brunette nodded, it total up to 12 silvers. Now what? Goldilocks muttered disappointingly. She have been looking forward to bath and bed. Maybe we can look around before we leave the village. Snow suggested. Um, yes, let's do that. Naruto nodded with a soft mutter, still in shock about his situation. The group wander around a bit until someone spots something. Oh, look, look. The short-haired blonde pointed at a certain shop. This guy is selling furniture. Can we please take a look at them? The group park their wagon then walk up to the furniture shop taking a look around to see if there's anything to buy. Huh, what's that? The genin's eyes land upon a row of wooden tub, is that a bathtub? Yee yup, 
A lanky bearded owner of furniture shop walked over to him with a drawl, you want to buy it? Um, how much for three tubs? Naruto dumbly opened his bag wide enough for the lanky man to peek inside and the owner's eyes widened as soon as he see some gold coins inside. If I do it right, the owner glanced at the other kids that came with the boy while wetting his dry lips, he'll get few gold out of them. One gold can feed his family for a year and half. I'll tell you the total after you pick out whatever you want to get. Oh, okay. The genin put the money away. You want three tubs, right? The owner eagerly pushed the tubs up to the front and the boy nodded, the owner seemed to be very friendly and helpful to him. Why are there empty barrels? Rapunzel stick her head inside one of four barrels. I guess it's so people can use it for whatever they want, like filling it with water or tools. Rosie shrugged and they decide to take two. Hey, mister, where do you keep the beds? Goldilocks asked the owner, tossing dozens of pillows into the tub much to the owner's joy. In the back. The owner answered and the girl raced to the back. Goldilocks, I don't think there'll be enough room for a bed in tent. Snow said to the said girl. Then we get a bigger one. The short-haired blonde said back, causing the ravenette to sweat drum. Vasilisa, would you like to get this stool? Gretel pointed to a small low woven stool then to two more furniture, and a workbench with a chest. For your sewing. Um, da. Vasilisa looked interested with them. Beside the furniture they picked out, the group bought several simple tables, two more workbench, ten, treasure, chests, three beds with mattress, ten woven stools and wood carving tools. Rapunzel chose the last one because she said she want to give it a try and if she don't like it, someone else can have it. The group make their depart from the village after paid the lanky owner five gold and one heart attack. Why heart attack? Naruto just seal all the furniture up in an empty storage scroll in front of him after the owner asked them about the space of cart out of concern. They did make few stops on their way out. Oh no, we forget to buy some firewoods. Rosie gasped as they set a campsite up near the river. It's fine, there's trees. Goldilocks skipped toward a tree with an axe, starting chopping the base merrily and everyone stare at her astoundingly. I guess someone's very happy about owning a bathtub. Gretel muttered to herself with arched brow and she glanced to a full bathtub with long clothes hang up on ropes, anchored to canais on trees around it. What will we have for supper? Vasilisa asked softly. I'm not sure. Snow hummed thoughtfully as she tapped her chin few times. Steak would be easy to cook. Her gaze shifted to the genin as he quietly sit by the river with fishing rod, until Naruto managed to catch some fishes from river. They don't know that Naruto was still processing the whole stuck on other side of the world situation. Few hours later in one long soak in Goldilocks case, the ravenette lie a map out on low table with everyone around it. Does anyone know where we are right now? The redhead asked curiously. Possibly around here. The ravenette pointed to a spot near a small image of village under a name, this name was engraved on fingerpost we drove past. Oh. Rosie uttered, what's the plan? Where are we going to next? Is there any pier? Naruto asked, let's see, Snow read the map before she press her finger on a border, the nearby one is pretty far away. How long will it take us to reach there? He asked. I estimate six months or more. She hummed before she looked up to him, why do you ask? I just found out that I'm on another side of the world because of the portal. Naruto scratched his head sheepishly. Other side, portal. Gretel gave him a odd look along with the others and he blinked few times. Oh, I don't tell you how I end up in Lost Woods. He nearly smacked his forehead when they all shook their heads, you see, I was on a training trip with Pervy Sage and, he explained everything up to the Lost Woods. Oh my, Snow uttered with her hand up near her mouth together with Gretel. Wow, Goldilocks whistled and Rapunzel just exchanged glance with Vasilia, both seemed to be little confused. Cool, Rosie grinned before everyone turned to her, what? She shrugged her hands up. He teleported all way to here from another side of world. That is pretty amazing. The brunette turned back to him, you're planning to take a ship to go back to your homeland, right? His response was a nod, by any chance, do you know what's the name of continent you hail from? Or what it look like on world map? Um, no. Naruto scratched his head sheepishly with a light blush and Gretel sighed at him. I guess that mean we may end up visiting many lands. Gretel muttered. Huh. He looked up with a rapid blink, we. He looked around at certain girls, but what about your home? 
Fam. We decided to stay with you. The brunette cut him off as she looked to other girls. We discussed about it the other day and we decide to accompany you all the way to the end. Wah. Wow. Naruto dropped his jaw. When did you talk about it? Few weeks ago, when you went out to training. Snow answered. I is that good idea. He said worriedly as he glanced at them. I mean, some of you are trying to find your way back home, looking for your missing brother and. There's a good chance that my brother wandered to another country. Gretel said calmly, or he's already dead. She has accepted the fact that her brother is dead and it's not because she's heartless, she's realist. Where she came from, there was a famine and she have seen people died at young age almost all the time. Also, she doesn't want to go back to her hometown because her father abandoned the siblings in woods and their stepmother wants them dead. If she look at it realistically, staying with this group give her livelihood and security. And I want to stay with you. Rosie smiled brightly. Me too. Vasilisa added, I want to see Z World. Oh, I don't have a home. Goldilocks shrugged lightly, she doesn't tell them that she ran away from home because of some fight she have with her mother. Oh oh, um, Naruto stared at them as he scratched his head slowly, okay. If that's what you want, some girls become exciting with some whispers and chat as he wonder if it's alright, after all their civilian before he shrug his shoulders lightly. Well, I guess it's not a bad thing, after all I won't travel alone by myself. Single quote. Snow watched Naruto praising Rosie on her archery after she got perfect accuracy and they were talking about making moving targets to make it more challenging. The Ravenette have been trying to find a way to get more close to her crush but it's hard for her because it's her first one in her true love. She does have some conversations with him but most of his attention was always on training and, wait, what if she, Snow quietly approached Naruto and Rosie. Naruto. What's up, Snow? Naruto turned to her with the little red riding hood. See can you, the Ravenette fidgeted with the skirt of her dress, teach me how to fight. You want to learn how to fight? He said in surprise. Just enough to defend myself. Snow muttered meekly. Ooh, good idea. Rosie chirped as she leaned on his back, you should teach her how to use dagger too. A dagger. Naruto rubbed his chin with a hum. Yes, it's best for protection. The redhead sneakily gave the Ravenette a wink. After all, how should she defend herself if someone get up and close to her? The Ravenette gain a blush as soon as she figure out what her red-haired friend is suggesting. Yeah, you're right. The Genin nodded few times with crossed arms. We have some training kanais in the scroll so that way, you can get better grip on it before using a real weapon. He glanced at Snow, do you want to start training now or wait until tomorrow? TT tomorrow would be better for me. The blushing Ravenette poked her fingers timidly. All right, we'll start tomorrow. Naruto grinned at her, never notice Rosie giving Snow a thumb up with beaming smile behind his back and Snow just dip her head down with burning face. When we get to our next stop, can we stay there for few days? Rapunzel asked as the group drove across a short wooden bridge over a creek. Why? The genin looked up to her from his scroll with a curious expression. I think it'll do us some good if we just rest and take it as an opportunity to hone our skills. The long-haired blonde said and he looked like considering it. You know, Gretel looked up as she tapped a side of her chin with index finger, we can try and do some little modification to the wagon while we're at it. Like providing a cover, Goldilocks gestured up to the sky. Yes, we need a shelter for rain and other things. The humming brunette nodded. I would like to make Z cushions if we're planning to add Z seats to Z sides. Vasilisa spoke. Oh, the short-haired blonde perked up as she turned to the youngest member of the group, you could make some mattress cover for the whole floor. I'll think about it, the young girl replied. Oh, does that mean we have to move things? Rosie asked, or make the cart bigger. To do that, we need a lot of woods. Gretel said before she noticed Goldilocks opening her mouth, when I say woods, I mean as in planks. The blonde closed her mouth with a wondering look, I don't think you have enough experience or skill for that. Who say I'm doing it? Goldilocks crossed her arms as she looked away with a huff and the brunette just shakes her head at her. Since everyone are all for it, we can camp out for, Naruto glanced between Snow and Gretel, four days. Sound good. The brunette nodded. It's perfect. Snow smiled, it's also good for Holly to take a lot of rest since she did all the work. All right then. 
The Jenin nodded as some girls looked happy about it and he opened the map up to check and see if there's any water source at their next stop. Maybe I'll take a little break from Jutsu and try something different. He thinks to himself. After found a good spot near a wide river, they take some time to set their camp up and make things more comfortable for their four-day staying. In middle of the campsite, there is a fire pit with makeshift spit roast stand with two Y wood sticks and a table was set up with seven stools near the pit. Three workbenches were set up near the tent few feet away from each other with several chests under them along with stools. The tubs have been placed behind the tent with privacy curtains and the rest remain on the cart or inside the scrolls. Naruto, what are your clones doing? Snow stared at hundred clones leaping around with shouts in the river and she can see some of them running on water like if it's solid, a sight that draw a shocked shriek from Goldilocks. Fishing. Naruto replied, we have two barrels, right? We can fill one up with fishes and seafood. Oh, that's smart. The ravenette smiled, that should save us some money for a while. She bring index finger up to her chin curiously, does Gretel know? Yeah, I asked her about the barrels few minutes ago. The genin grinned. And what about other barrel? Snow asked. Water. Naruto answered, the water from this river is safe to drink so we'll fill it up. He'd take a look around at the camp and to see if anyone else need help or not. Vasilisa was doing some little sewing experiment with some certain fabrics, Gretel was discussing something with Rapunzel while they look over the wagon, Rosie fed Holly some cabbages and water and Goldilocks, yup, slacking off a bit because there was nothing for her to do at the moment. Since we have free time now, do you want to train now or? Yes, I want to get some training in. Snow nodded eagerly, can we start in 30 minutes? Sure, he nodded back, left, left, right, duck. Naruto announced as he swung a training weapon slowly and snow duck under it, holding her training dagger up in guard stance. Sidestep right, he thrust the false kunai forward as the ravenette move out of the way, two steps back. Snow backpedal until she accidentally step on her own dress and she fall backward with a startled yelp. Whoa, Snow would have hit the ground hard if Naruto hadn't react fast, he quickly grabbed her then twist their bodies around so he can take most of the impact. Oof. He grunted out lightly with his arms wrapped around the ravenette before he tilt his head up to her, you alright? Why yes, I'm fine aa after an end nasty fall. The blushing ravenette stuttered timidly in her crush's embrace, and my foot got tt tangle up with my dd dress. We should change your clothes. Naruto hummed, maybe a short skirt or pant will do. I I agree. Snow muttered meekly, do we have ankle length dress? Um, when are you going to get off me? He asked awkwardly after a while and Snow blinked couple times until she realized that she was still lying on him. Oh, I'm sorry. She leapt off him like he's on fire and she gained full body atomic blush. It's okay. Naruto get up, brushing some dirt off himself with few pats. Let's stop here for now. I'll have my cage bunch and unseal the clothes intent for you to pick out. Snow just nodded while staring at ground to hide her heavy blush as they walked back to the campsite and the genin cast a concerning gaze at her, her face is awfully red and he worry if she have come down with a fever or something. Hey, how was the training? Rosie greeted them as soon as they reached the campsite. Beside a little mishap, she's getting good at reacting. The genin create a single clone to go inside the tent and the redhead tilt her head curiously at that. My clone is unsealing the clothes so Snow can pick something out that can help her move more easy and won't get in way during the spar and other things like that. Ah, Rosie hummed, maybe I should do the same thing. Say, we can use chests as our personal storage for our clothes. Gretel turned her head to them, so that way, it'll be easy for us to take things out and pack instead of relying on Naruto and his scrolls. That's pretty smart. Naruto whistled, Gretel, you'll make one great boss or secretary someday. Oh, thank you, the brunette blinked as she wonder why his comment make her flustered inwardly, I think. The girls enter the tent together once the clone vanishes and the original genin walk up to a empty workbench. What would I start with? The blonde took some scrolls out from the giant scroll then looked over them with a hum, nah, nope, no, what the fuck is art of crab dance? No. He'd pick a medium scroll up, Fuenjutsu. Hey, I'll start with that. Naruto shrugged his shoulders, he don't have any high hope for that. It's not like he'll get it down in short time. Inside the tent, the girls shuffled through the clothes and so far, their chests only have their sleepwear. 
That is one interesting clothing. Vasilisa ran her hand across a kimono, finding it to be fascinating because she never have seen one with many patterns and colors and there were other like that but with different patterns and colors. But I don't understand Z point of this pant over there, she glanced at the said clothing in one corner, why is it C though? Who know? Rapunzel shrugged as she fold purple sundress before she tuck it away in her chest and resume looking through the clothes. The more I look through them, the more bizarre and unique they get. She raised her eyebrow at one of many made uniforms, wondering why it has so many frills and very short skirt. True, and they're more cute. Goldilocks tossed a green blouse and forest brown kipau shirt inside the chest along with short green skirt and biker short. What? Naruto's voice cried out as everyone turned their heads to stare at the flap, how can it be so easy? Hey, what do you think? Rosie stretched her arms out as she twirl around in front of the girls, they're so comfortable and easy to move. She now wear a brown huntsman breeches, the pants tucked inside her leather boots and white dress shirt that tucked into her pant. She still have her red hooded cloak over her clothes. She picked some leathered armors up with one other thing, and I found a glove for archery. Rosie, are you wearing a pant? Snow gasped scandalized. Yes. The redhead beamed. What the fuck? Naruto's voice cried, I'm on level 3 already. I'm going to ask Naruto to see what he think of it. Rosie jogged outside, Naruto, how do I look? He'll be so mortified. The ravenette muttered quietly. Oh, you look pretty great and cool. The genin's voice said, with Bo, you look pretty badass. Thank you, Naruto. The redhead giggled, I'm going back inside. Snow silently reach out to some modest pants, never notice a tiny sweat drop and head shake from Gretel. Girls, don't forget to pick out the clothes for winter and rain. Gretel cleared her throat as she take a thick coat with furs, while we don't know what weather will it be anytime, it won't harm a little to be prepared for anything. What the heck? Naruto's voice cried, did I accidentally create a new seal? And it's stasis trap, what the fuck is going on? I swear if I master these space-time fuenjutsu in short time, I'll lose my shit. Okay, Gretel. The long-haired blonde smiled at her, they decide to ignore the boy's shouts for time being as they went through the clothes to keep an own. I don't understand, Naruto muttered it over and over as he stretched the fuenjutsu scroll out while they ate chicken and grilled fishes, I don't understand, how is it possible? Um, is what possible? Rapunzel asked after swallowed her foods. Fuenjutsu, I was told that it's difficult to get a grasp on the art of Fuenjutsu and it'll take over 30 years to master it. The genin furrowed his brows in puzzlement, yet, I'm level 4 in just few hours and that's without using bunch and shortcut. Level 4. Goldilocks raised her eyebrow at him oddly. Pervy Sage said something about 10 levels and this scroll explained about how one move up a level by meeting the requirements like, for example, create 3 different basic seals from scratch. Naruto replied. Oh. The short-haired blonde uttered with a uncaring shrug, she just asked and got her answer. So it's unusual. Rosie tilted her head slightly. Yeah, it's said here that two out of five chunin are roughly around level three. He said, and I'm Jenin, they stared at him blankly, Jenin is low rank ninja, chunin outranked Jenin and Jonin is high rank than other two. Cage, the leader of ninja, outrank all. Ah. It's like page, squire then knight. Gretel said, and they all obey the reigning monarch. Ooh. The rest of the girls immediately understand it and the only boy stare at her confusingly for a moment. Maybe you're gifted. Snow suggested. Really? Naruto blinked couple times before he perk up with foxy grin, yeah, must be. Hee hee, maybe that'll help me get closer to become the Hokage. He reached to the end and he noticed two things with arched eyebrow. The first one read Naruto's three years training trip plan with a little line under it that say, for Jiraiya's eyes only, and another one said secrets. He opened the first one to see what Jiraiya have in mind for his training and he read the outline of the training plan. Learn how to summon every single toads. Mastering Rasengan. Create more techniques with Rasengan. Take control of Kyuubi's chakra and use it more up to nine tails. Force Naruto to do it with some. Promise, to teach him new jutsu, which is more Rasengan and Toad jutsu. Maybe tampering with Hake no Fuen Shiki to allow Kyuubi's chakra flowing through more freely. Never ever let Naruto know the secrets. Never. That's it. Exclamation mark. The genin dropped his jaw at the, plan, only three things. 
And he want to what? Tampering the seal. Oh hell no. Don't the arrow Senan had heard of this saying, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. And take control. For some reason, it don't sit right with him. What if one day, he demand the fox to give him the chakra and the fuzzball refused to, that will go bad during battle. He has to come up with a different method to use the fuzzball's chakra. There's one last line that make Naruto's eyebrow arched farther up, secrets. What secrets? Maybe it's about the second one. I wonder what it say to give him this reaction. Goldilocks said with fish in her mouth. Don't talk with your mouth full. Snow scolded her lightly and Naruto opened the second one up, several scrolls fall near his feet. He bent down to pick them up until something grabbed his attention right away. Uzumaki clan. Naruto's eyes widened before he quickly opened it with a sharp yank and he read everything right away. There was some handwritten notes here and there. Uzumaki clan was a prominent clan in Uzushiogakur before their demise, the common trait they share is red hair, and they were well renowned for their uncanny talent in fuinjutsu and their longevity. A member can live up to over 200 years and, possibly, more while appear to be young than they look, due to their slow aging. Their longevity allows them to survive any much more severe injuries and able to recover from injuries and exhaustion with much greater efficiency in short time. It is theorized that they are strong enough to survive the removal of tailed beasts, it was later proved when Kashina survived the removal. Because of their longevity, Uzumaki had the uncanny ability to quickly heal themselves, making them more fearsome in battle. Not only that, some members can display a unique sensory ability as well as the ability to suppress their chakra signature making them undetectable and also, some members possessed a unique form of chakra with special properties which made them especially well suited to become Jinchuriki as well as produce adamantine chains made from their own chakra. Uzumaki Kashina, the former heiress, was the wielder of adamantine chains and possessed chakra that make her suited as the Jinchuriki. A clan symbol near the end appeared to be familiar to the genin until he quickly realized it, the spiral symbol were on Kanahagakur Shinobi's vests and even on his back. Wait, I'm part of clan. Naruto's eyes widened before he read it again, no, it say here the members have red hair so, he frowned slightly, maybe the last name was just given to him since he's orphan. He unroll it a little more until he see another handwritten note at the end. Due to Kashina's death, her son, Uzumaki Naruto, is now the heir to Uzumaki clan and the next Jinchuriki. The son must not be allowed to learn about his heritage. S son. Naruto gasped shakily, he's part of a famous powerful clan. In the air, but not only that, he finally found the name of his mother. A and Arrow Senen know. Who else know about that but hide it from him? The genin quickly glanced down at the other secret scrolls until he spot one with Uzushiogakur name and he quickly scoop it up, rip it open. Uzushiogakur was the shinobi village of the land of whirlpools, located on an island past the coast of Haino Kuni and surrounded by whirlpools that only Uzumaki and their allies know how to get past the whirlpool's defense. Uzushiogakur was known as the village of longevity, due to the long lives of the people there, and they also are very advanced in technology. Uzushiogakur had close ties with Kanahagakur. Because of this, all flak jackets worn by the Chunin and Janin shinobi of Kanahagakur bear the crest of Uzushiogakur, symbolizing the strong friendship between both villages. Its ninja were renowned for their fuinjutsu and their abilities to the point that it led to its destruction in war when the great nations and some small nations worked together to attack Uzushiogakur at once and Uzushiogakur fought back on their own to the bitter end. I can't believe it. The genin cried out at the information, which war was it? He can't believe how badass his clan sound like and the fact that many nations band together to take it down. He quickly dig through the scrolls to find more information. Huh. Naruto picked a scroll up then read it, wills for me. He opened it right away. In case of my death, I, Uzumaki Kashina, leave my son, Uzumaki Naruto, the deed of Uzumaki compound, all properties and the family heirlooms within it. He will inherit the secret arts of Uzumaki that is sealed by blood seal within this will in the Uzumaki accounts in bank under my and his name. Signed, Uzumaki Kashina. Naruto read the second will right away. In case of my death, I, Namikaze Minato, leave my son, Uzumaki Naruto, the Namikaze account in bank, the land deeds and all properties within these lands. He shall receive the scrolls of Horaishin no Jutsu, dozen of Horaishin Kanai and several space-time Fuinjutsu.
All of the said items are located in a blood seal within this will. If both Kashina and I die in any circumstances, Naruto will be placed under Jiraiya's, his godfather, care. Signed, Namikaze Minato, the Yandaimi Hokage. WWW what? Naruto's brain shut down from the revelations. First he just found out that he belonged to a clan, the name of his parents and his father was the fourth Hokage. The same man who sealed Kayubi inside him and damn him to the near isolated life of Jinchuriki. And Jiraiya's his godfather, that mean he know the truth the whole time and to make it more fucked up, the pervy sage just ditch his responsibility of raising Naruto under his parents' wishes. Wait, if his father was the Hokage then, the old man know. The whole time, he know. What the hell is going on? Naruto, what's wrong? Snow asked with some concern, snapping the genin from his internal distress and he gaze up to see everyone stares. Um, nn nothing. He quickly put all scrolls away then get up, I I'm going to turn in early, he swiftly enters the tent. Oh, I don't think so. Goldilocks suddenly got up and walked toward the tent before she yanked the flap open as Naruto got startled with a jerk of his head. Tell us what's bothering you. You look very troubled while reading the scrolls. What did they say? I I I said it's nothing. Naruto turned his head away from her. We want to help you. Rosie stepped inside, please tell us what's wrong. The rest enter the tent with their own concerning expressions. I, he looked back to them as his mind wrestled with something, it's just, his head dropped with a sigh, I comma I found out that I have a clan, had a clan, it was wiped out by many nations during a war and I finally found everything about my parents, their names and, other things. It's really something that an orphan like me want to know because they both died on the day I was born, but at same time, I found out about few things that I don't like, he won't tell them everything, of course. Which is? Vasilisa asked. Pervy Sage is my godfather. Naruto frowned bitterly, he was supposed to take care of me but he did not. He just left me too, he paused at the memories of villagers stunning him, and he don't show up until few months ago, and to make it worse, he know the truth about my family and heritage. In one of the scroll, it say that he won't let me find out about them and keep everything secret forever. He, he wasn't, he wasn't going to tell me about my parents and my clan, he felt betrayed by Jiraiya and Gramps on many levels. Come here. Before the genin know it, Goldilocks pull him into a hug and he realize that his eyes have been watering up when his sight become blurry. What he did to you isn't right. Snow hugged his other side, he should have told you and do his responsibility. Yes. Rosie joined the hug and the rest also joined the group hug in some sign of support. We're here for you, Gretel said, so let it out. I I, Naruto stuttered and before he know it, he start to crying while the girls kept hugging him, some soothing him in their own way. He feel some weights on him when Naruto's eyes fluttered open and he slightly tilt his head up in confusion to discover that the girls were cuddling him with Rosie and Snow on top of him. Wah, it start to come back to Naruto. He have cried himself to sleep and it look like the girls also fall asleep with him, after they change into their sleepwear, somehow. Was it after he passed out or during his cries? Naruto look at the sleeping girls' faces and a small smile crack on his face, finding them cute, cute. Naruto caught himself with a light blush, it feel weird for him to think that. Is it because of last night? He wondered as he looked at the girls again and he realizes something else. How do I get up without waking them up? That's pretty smart to take some crates apart for planks. Naruto said as some of his clones hammered two lids together to create a thick board then they hand it to another clones and they place it at the back of the cart, hammering some planks under it. I figure we'll put some empty crates to some use. Gretel replied while watching the bunchens testing the modified cart out to make sure everything's secure enough, with that, the space in wagon will possibly be big enough for everyone. What if it isn't? He asked curiously. Then we may buy a new wagon. The humming brunette tapped her chin lightly, and some horses if need to. So that way, we have one for storage and another for passengers. She mumbled to herself quietly, it looked like she's covering all possibilities for the future. By the way, I noticed that you have create many clones today. She glanced at groups of clones around the campsite, each group has about 100 clones and the groups have different tasks. Are you taking a shortcut? Yeah, I want to become stronger in a fast way. Naruto looked at the groups. 
One group focus on fuenjutsu, second group work on jutsu, third group practice the chakra controls with tree climbing and water walking, fourth smallest group practice irio ninjutsu, fifth group read some scrolls on space-time fuenjutsu to get better understanding on horizon, sixth group work on different crafts and the rest of other groups shifted through some scrolls to see if there's anything for Naruto to learn or not. I know it's kinda cheating in a way but I want to live up to my Ka-san's legacy and for my clan. Who say it's cheating? Gretel said, the way I see it is that you're taking advantage of your cage bunch and to gain more experience and to get ahead. But there's one thing you need to do on your own. What? The blonde blinked at her confusingly. You have to do workout. She said, you may receive memories and experiences from your clones but you can't build your strength up with your clones, am I right? Naruto think deeply, while your clones work on whatever they do. You have to focus on physical exercise to increase your accuracy, agility, power, and speed until you decide to practice jutsu or something else. Why why you're right, Naruto uttered dumbly, why don't he ever think of that? Um, I'll leave you to your training. Gretel gave his arm a squeeze as she gestured to the clones on wagon with another hand, I'm going to talk to them about building some seats. Okay. The dazed Genin uttered again and the brunette walks toward the wagon. The break has come to end as everyone get ready for the travel and most were satisfied with the wagon for now. The size of the cart have been doubled in size, come with cushioned benches on both sides, some small chests have been stowed under them, and it have a covered top. All settle in, snow peaked inside from the front. Almost, Naruto called back as he tightened the ropes around the crates in the back, and done. Ready to go. The ravenette gave him a nod before she turned back to command Holly to pull the cart and the genin take his seat. Rosie almost immediately sit next to him as her head rest on his shoulder and Rapunzel claim a seat on his other side, leaning a little close to him. Naruto kinda noticed that the girls have become a little, touchy with him lately after his little breakdown, which he felt embarrassed about, but he don't mind it because it feel nice with some positive attentions from people around his age. Oh, I love the new change. Goldilocks lie on her side on the bench as she put a small pillow under her head, the ride will be so smooth and comfort, a bump cause her to fall off the bench with a yelp before she sit up with a childish scowl as she rubbed a bump on her head, hey, Snow. Tell your horse to watch where she's going. Yes, Goldilocks. Snow's voice hollered back and the short-haired blonde swear she heard some amusement in her tone. Suddenly, I want horse for dinner, the short-haired blonde growled and she never hears some snickers behind her back. Almost a week has gone by when they reach another small town and once they ask some villagers an important question. Again, Goldilocks groaned annoyingly, no in. What kind of town does not have lodge? It's good thing they have beds in storage, which they can't use, due to the size of the tent. At least there are more stores. Gretel looked around before her gaze shifted back to the group. But first, we need to visit a carpenter to give our wagon a look to see if it need any reinforcements and to purchase planks and woods. Where can we find one? Naruto asked, only to be confused when the brunette gave him a deadpan stare and some snickers and giggles from several girls. Look behind you. The brunette sighed and the shinobi turned around to see a bearded carpenter sanding a beam in front of stacks of woods. A embarrassed blush form on the sheepish boy's face, they won't let him live it down. Goldilocks will make sure of it, he'll know. After pulling the wagon over to the carpenter's shop for a checkup, the carpenter get up from under the wagon and he turned to the group. I see two or three things that need to be reinforced, but the work is not bad. The carpenter said before he scratched his beard with a hum, is your travel a long or short one, if you don't mind me asking. Long one, Naruto replied before he paused for a moment, I think. He don't know if his homeland is close or far away. Ah, the carpenter glanced at the wagon with a look as if he was considering something before his gaze shift back to the children in front of him, would you like to purchase a second wagon? It's Vardo. I believe it will benefit you greatly since it'll getting cold, the winter is not far away. May we take a look at it? Gretel hummed thoughtfully and the carpenter beckoned them to follow him. What's Vardo? The blonde boy turned to snow puzzlingly as they walked around the corner of the man's workshop. It's a different kind of wagon. Snow answered, it's almost like a tent and some band of wanderers prefer to use it in form of home. The group reaches the back to see a big plain Vardo wagon with red door in front. Is it okay for us to look inside? The brunette asked. Yes, go ahead. 
The carpenter crossed his arms with a nod and the brunette opened the door to look inside with everyone else. There is a king-size mattress in the back with three base cabinet under it, seven shelf shelves on the right side that stretch from near the door to the bed and a desk with chair on left side with white empty space between the said object and bed. No window. Rapunzel tilted her head, so the cold air won't get in. The carpenter replied, if you want to buy it, I'll fasten it to the back of your wagon and show you how to unattach and attach them. How much for it? Gretel asked. Thirty silvers. The bearded man held three fingers out, he decided to sell it cheap to them because they're children and he can't have conscience on him to send them out in this storage wagon when the winter is coming. I believe you all will put it to good use since I have no need for it anymore. Ooh, let's get it. Rosie turned to them. I agree, it'll save us some time setting the campsite up. Snow said, and we can move few things from the wagon to Varda wagon. Da, we can make it more lively. Vasilisa added. I like it too. Rapunzel clapped in interest. And there's bed. Goldilocks jabbed her finger at the said bed, I want this bed so bad. It earned couple sweat drops from other, what about the other beds they have in the storage? I'm all for it. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Very well. Gretel nodded to them before she turned to the carpenter, we shall purchase it along with some woods and supplies you have in the shop. Would you like to look at some tools too? The carpenter asked as he guide the group back to his workshop, and may I make a suggestion? I recommend you to buy some animals or livestock like chickens that lay eggs so you can save money in long run. I can't believe we still have so many money after that. The shinobi whistled to himself as he put a storage scroll, labeled, woods and planks, away. Quite. The brunette stowed a toolbox away in the front wagon. What the group doesn't know is that the carpenter sold everything cheap to them out of kindness. Now what's next? Rapunzel asked, are we going to some stores? Yes, we need to buy games and books to keep ourselves occupied during the traveling. Gretel hummed, they have some books but it was in Naruto's language which no one but himself understand. Ah, books. Both Naruto and Goldilocks groaned annoyingly. I think I have seen the bookstore near here. Snow tapped her chin, but for the games. I found them. The group turned to see Rosie wave them over near a stall with many items lying around, I find place that sell games. Huh, that's quite a coincidence. The ravenette blinked once before the group walk over to the redhead. I'll say, Naruto said before something dart under his foot and he feel something break at his step. Huh. He lift his foot away to look down with a raised eyebrow at a sight of a gingerbread man breaking in half from waist, why is there a gingerbread? I've run away from a little old woman. The gingerbread man suddenly lift its head up. What the fuck? The blonde boy dropped his jaw at the living cookie with widened eyes and the girls just stare at it. A little old man and the old lady. The gingerbread man continued, and I can run away from them, I can. Until I got stepped on by a little boy and got snapped in half. Suddenly a old man ran up to them then scooped the screaming gingerbread man and all pieces up to shove them into his mouth with crunches. I'm half gone. The gingerbread man screamed as the old man devoured him, I'm three quarters gone. I'm all gone. The scream fade in the old man's mouth and the happy man wipe crumbs off his mouth then shake the gawking shinobi's hand happily before he stroll off happily to a panting old woman. Naruto slowly turned to the girls with widened eyes, ddd did you see? A magical living gingerbread man. The redhead nodded few times, yes, we did. She pressed a index finger to her cheek with a tilted head, wonder why a witch bring it to live. Maybe it's not a witch but a special creature like others. Snow guessed. A new monster or a curse. Goldilocks shrugged, still weird either way. H how are they not freaking out? Naruto stared at the girls until a thought occurred to him, maybe it's norm here. They did mention magic a lot, wait. Witches, monsters, curses. He opened and closed his mouth few times before he let and sigh out, I'll ask them later, as soon as I forget about, that weird shit. He cleared his throat, L let's go look at the games. Ah, yes. Rosie turned to the stall as everyone joined her, I was thinking of getting this deck of cards because it has pretty images, in the end, they bought two card decks, checker, chess, puzzles, dice set and several more games. After another shopping spree, they make a campsite few miles away from the village and they spend most of time organizing things in the Varda wagon. Oh, there's a secret compartment like what the carpenter said. 
The redhead lift a one by one square wooden lid up from floor in the corner near bed to reveal a said secret compartment and it appeared to be one foot deep and three foot wide. We can hide the money and jewelries in there. Gretel said over her shoulder as she put one of many new books on the shelves, barely taking up a quarter on one side. But we have to bag the coins up first. Right. Rosie put the lid back and she get up to put a changing curtain up. Vasilisa, do we have another sheet? Snow asked while she tucked the corner of sheet under the mattress, if so, can you please give me one? Da, we have plenty. Vasilisa was packing some blankets in left base cabinet, do you want regular, wool or one with different fabric? Regular, please. The ravenette thanked the young girl as soon as she gave her another blanket. I don't see why we have to put the sleeping bags in there instead of on bed. Goldilocks grumbled to herself as she shoved sleeping bags in the right cabinet with grunts, get in there, you. The cabinet may be long as the bed but it's narrow, due to walls that divide the cabinets, that and she's a lousy packer. Gretel, I finished pack the games in this crate. Rapunzel gestured to a small lidless crate, where do you want me to put it? Under the desk, the brunette said and the long-haired blonde pushes it under the desk. I found your chests. Naruto entered the Vardo with scroll before he unsealed the girl's personal chests and he put them all in the bottom shelf since it's wide and big enough to store the chests. He look around, anything else? Yes, please go get the money box and jewelries. Gretel said. Gotcha. He left and some girls look up with questioning expression. What's gotcha? Rosie wondered. Maybe it's a word in different language. The long-haired blonde suggested before they resume their tasks. That look way better than the tent. Naruto whistled at the Vardo's surrounding, they had finished a hour ago and were getting ready for bed. The shelves now hold most of scrolls, books and few objects like boxes but it have a lot of empty space and the desk now have lantern and some kind of small cloth mat. It may don't look much but it's way nicer than tent where you can feel some earth lumps under you. I'll say. Snow replied, it will look more lively once we decorate it. A beautiful carpet or rug will be perfect for both wagons. Vasilisa hugged a pillow to herself, glancing at the floor from the bed. Carpet for both. He tilted his head, he can understand why it can go in the Vardo but not the other one. It's better than following lines and making a shape out of pattern on the floor. The young blonde replied, it'll make floor more warm, soft and comfortable to rest our feet on it. Her head turned to Goldilocks for a moment before she turned back to Naruto, or sleep on it. Hey, Goldilocks shot her a mild glare, why did you look at me for? Ah, gotcha. Naruto rubbed his chin, I think we have one somewhere in storage, I'll look for it later. If not, we can buy it or make it if you like to. The young blonde nodded at him, well, good night. He put the sleeping bag on the floor. Naruto, what are you doing? The ravenette looked at him before he get any chance to lie down. Um, getting ready to go to sleep. He answered lamely. On the floor, Snow made a small cute frown as the only boy blinked. No, you're going to sleep on the bed with us. Yes, get in bed with us. Rosie gave him a cute frown with puffed out cheeks and Naruto looked to the other girls to see that two also frowned lightly while other two appear to not care about it, he think. How can they make frowning faces look cute? Naruto blinked rapidly at his strange thought before he shake it out of his head mentally as he looked back to the girls, um, if you're all fine with it then alright. He put the sleeping bag away before he get in the bed and the rest of the girls make themselves comfortable. That is starting to feel normal now. Naruto thought as the girls cuddle up together with Snow on his right side with Vasilisa and Gretel while Rosie take his left side with Rapunzel and Goldilocks. He did admit that he thought it was weird for the girls to cuddle up with him every night after his breakdown episode but then he slowly get used to it and only one thing that puzzle him is why some girls faces still become little red. Maybe it's girl thing. He shrugged mentally before his eyes closed. Do we have medical supplies? Rapunzel asked out of blue as she read a thick medical book, like bandages and gauzes. Yeah, there's few medical scrolls in the giant scroll. Naruto tilted his head at her, why? Are you going to give first aid a try this time? Yes, I think I find what I can do for us. The long-haired blonde replied, we don't have a medic so I'll be one. She looked very eager about it. Oh, that's great. He encouraged her with a grin. We're going to stop here for a little break. Snow announced as the wagon slowed down to stop and everyone get out to stretch their legs out. 
Is that ocean? Rapunzel gasped in wonderment at the sight of ocean. Yup, but it's quite shame that there is no beach around here. Rosie said, there is nothing but cliffs in front of them. It'll be fun to play around in sands. According to the map, this road will take us to a beach, Gretel said as two girls look excited, in three to four months. Both redhead and long-haired blonde deflated at that, and that's not at all, we will have to change the paths in few weeks. Sorry. Ah. The redhead pouted. There, there. Snow patted Rosie's head gently, we'll visit beach one day. How long will the break be for? Vasilisa asked while taking a small wooden doll out of her pocket, tending to it. Naruto remember asking her about it once and she told him it was a gift from her mother who had passed away. An hour. The Ravenette answered. An hour. Naruto grinned. Perfect. That'll give me enough time to try something out. He pointed to a large overlooking cliff. I'll be over there if you girls need me for something else. Okay. Snow said as the blonde boy jogged over to the cliff and she turned to see Goldilocks walk to other side of the wagon. Are you going to work out? Yes. Goldilocks groaned annoyingly, need to stop my arms getting sore from chopping woods. Stupid Naruto. With the shinobi, he take a look around to make sure the coast is clear because he want to do a wide-scale jutsu and do a little experiment. All right, I can try this doden jutsu out. Naruto grinned to himself before he went through series of hand seals, here I go. Doden, Ryu Teho. He slammed his hands on the edge of the cliff and a large earth dragon erupt from the cliffside with wide opening maw before it fire a large house sized boulder over the sea couple miles until it touched down with a huge splash. Okay, that was standard. Naruto nodded to himself with a whistle before he performed the same hand seals again. This scroll said if I pour more chakra and split it in different direction, he mumbled to himself before he repeat his action, commanding his chakra to split in three directions and two new earth dragons heads erupt on sides of the first head, facing diagonally. They fire three large boulders in three different direction and it went farther than usual, due to more chakra output. Sweet. Naruto laughed giddily until an thought occurred to him, what if I use fuzzball's chakra, what will happen? He performed the seals again while forcing Kyubi's chakra out and what happened next was unexpected for him. It create two new dragon heads and the five heads fire five colossal boulders, two in opposite horizontal directions, two diagonal and one straight. They all fly so fast that they vanish from his sight and at same time, the shockwave of Biju enhanced jutsu propel him backward with a tumble. Whoa! He yelped out as he rolled backward until he finally stopped with his back on the ground before he sprang up in sitting position with widened eyes, whoa. It's really good thing that he tested here instead of other place or the consequence would be very dire. Naruto, are you okay? Snow called out worriedly. I'm fine. Naruto hollered back before he glanced back at the sea then shrugged to himself as he jogged back to the group to ease some possible worries. At least the boulders will land in water somewhere within this massive ocean. A man steer a boat with his crew running around to do their tasks and one of the crew members turned to the captain. Sinbad, where are we heading to? Two, Sinbad said until a massive shadow cast over them and he barely have time to look up in confusion before a large boulder crashed down on the ship, completely destroy it as the boulder pushed the drowning captain down in the deep leagues along with his doomed crew. See how beautiful it is. A shady man wave his right hand over, nothing but empty air as he pretend to hold something up with his left hand and the second shady man nod few times to a emperor and his subjects. Now why don't you take a change here? The second man gestured to empty air, trying his best to hold his snickers back. Very well. The emperor approached them and he reached up to remove his robe. Crash. Suddenly, everyone in the building got squashed under the large boulder and the villagers scream out in shock as the crater appear under them, caving the city in. A young girl takes a seat in a rowboat and she look around as she was waiting for someone until she hear a huge splash in a distance. She look over with arched eyebrow before her eyes widened at the sight of huge wave heading toward her and before she get a chance to react, the giant wave carry her to somewhere far away from here with a silent scream. Few minutes later, a man show up and he look around at the empty pier. Did I come to wrong place? He walked away with a puzzling mumble. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. A anthro wolf growled in front of a small house made out of straws and an anthro pig's head pop up from the window. No, not by the hairs on my chinny chin chin. The pig ducked back inside. Then I'll huff, 
and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. The wolf inhaled deeply with puffed out cheeks and, the giant boulder smashed down on the straw house then it roll over with some bounces. The bewildered wolf slowly blow raspberries while staring at bloody smear in front of him then turning his head to right to stare at shattered sticks and bricks with some bloody smears and rolling boulder that disappear over the hill. Um, what the hell? The wolf uttered before he slowly retreat to wherever he come from and he nervously checked the sky for any falling boulders. Fortunately, the last boulder safely land in the ocean. Rosie, you ready? Naruto asked the said girl as they stand near the woods. Ready. Rosie tugged the bow's string with an eager nod. There are twenty moving targets in this obstacle. The blonde gestured to his clone who was holding a wooden circle in the distance, it'll start as soon as you go in and the obstacle will be over once you reach the twentieth target, even if you miss it or not. Good luck with it. Thank, Naruto. The redhead suddenly gave him a peck on right cheek before she run into the woods with a giggle as the blonde yelped out in surprise. Wah. Naruto rubbed his cheek with a light blush and he slowly walk over to another clearing to pick a trikonai up. Why did she kiss me? Is it because she's very affectionate? He wondered before he push it back for later as he glance at the kanai in his hand, let's see if the third time's a charm. He threw it at a tree in front of him and prepares himself for the flash, but nothing happened when the kanai hit the tree. Damn. He groaned as he jogged over to pull the kanai out before he examined the seal over, did I do something wrong or miss something? He took his father's tri kanai out to compare them, they were exactly the same and he don't understand why it don't work. He studied them for few minutes until he realized something, wait, Naruto looked close to a certain seal formation, it's a chakra signature that can pull the owner from anywhere like in Kuchio's no jutsu. Ooh. He pulled his brush out to make some adjustments, wondering if his theory is correct. After dry it off, the shinobi throw the kanai again and he suddenly have a strange feeling of something pulling him. Before he know it, he kiss the dirt painfully and Naruto roll over to get up with a painful grunt, rubbing his nose before he discover that he's barely a foot away from his original place. Oh, it work. He cheered before he wince in pain, it feel like he just broke his nose but it'll pass in few minutes thanks to his regeneration. Now he need to practice more to master the Horaishin no Jutsu before he can learn more Horaishin techniques. And done. Naruto almost jumped up as soon as Rosie burst out giddily, how did I do? How did I do? Let's check. The shinobi mentally call his clones back and they check the redhead's result as soon as the clones show up. You got 11 out of 20, that's not bad. Ah, half. Rosie pouted childishly and he pat her head. There, there. Naruto said as he dispel his clones then dig the arrows out from the bull-eye target, you'll get them all next time. His foot hit something near the base of a tree, wah. He pull his foot back to look down with a raised eyebrow to see a dirt-covered lid. What's that? She tilted her head. I don't know. He got down with her to dig around the lid, it looked like a jar or something, they push the dirt aside to reveal an old big jar, almost half the size of his torso. Why is it buried here? Naruto reached down to lift the jar and he was surprised how heavy it feel. Whoa, what's inside? Who know? Rosie tapped the jar before she looked up to him, let's open it and see. Yeah, Naruto wedged the lid out and they look inside before they gasp in shock, it was filled up with gold, coins and lumps. Whoa. They cried together before they meet eyes, um, do you think we should put it back or? I don't know. She shrugged, the jar looks so old and who would bury it all way out here? Yeah, he hummed, if I remember correctly, the nearby city is about two weeks away from here. Maybe it's a buried treasure. Ooh, buried treasure. Rosie whistled with shiny eyes, she really loved this kind of adventure like discovering the buried treasures for one. Can we take it with us? Well, Naruto think it over, the jar appear to be so old and there's no evidence that someone else have been here before them. Yeah, let's take it back. He nodded to her before he carry it with him, walking back to wagon with the skipping redhead. Few hours later after the group resume their travel, a man carry a shovel with a smirk before he blink at the hole under the tree. Huh, he blinked rapidly, did he hide it in another place? He questioned before he start to shove the shovel into the dirt near the hole and he end up digging few holes until a old man approached the area with a cheery tune. The old man's eyes widened at the sight of the man digging holes in his secret place. You bastard. 
The screaming old man tackle the screaming man down then start beating down on him, where's my gold? Where is it? Get off, you miser, get off. The man covered his head with his forearms, I don't know. I don't know. Their screams carry over the wind to a small village, that was a mile away behind the woods. For an old jar, it's in perfect condition and looks so new. Naruto washed the now empty jar out in the river, wonder if one of the girls want it for personal or we can fill it with something like fruits. He pour the remaining water back in the river then set the clean jar aside and he look up, only to raise his eyebrow with a blink as he see two pots floating down the river. Well, brother, since we, the brass pot said before Naruto quickly run on the water to grab the pots then run back to the shore and he examined them almost right away, one appeared to be earthware and other a brass. The living pots were too stunned to say anything because they just witnessed someone walking on water like it's a solid land. Did someone lose it? Naruto glance up and down the river for anyone to show up but no one have come. Oh, well, finder keeper. He shoved the pots down under the water, ignoring the air bubbles as he unwittingly drowned the living pots. After finished washing the now inanimate pots out, he picked the jar up then carry the pots back to the Varda wagon. Naruto, do we have these pots before? Vasilisa asked him when he entered the wagon and almost everyone look up to him from their dinner, beside Goldilocks who was having her, gold madness, episode as she run her hands through the new gold with drools. No, I just found them floating down the river. He replied as he put the pots on a towel in an empty shelf to dry them out, no one was around to claim it so, he shrugged his shoulders, finder keeper, it's our now. What's finder keeper? The young blonde asked curiously. It mean when we find something like an item or money, we decide to keep it. Naruto explained, hence finder keeper. Ah, Vasilisa gave him a understanding nod, what are you going to do with Zenu pots? A, flower or planting? He shrugged, can you please turn them around, they look creepy. Rapunzel shivered at the ghastly faces of the pots, it looked like they're froze in horror and agony. Naruto turned them around, thank you. Here's your dinner, Naruto. Snow handed a bowl of soup to him, be careful, it's hot. Thank, Snow. Naruto sat down on floor as he started eating soup before he tilt his head at the girls, um, why are we eating inside and not outside? It's starting to get cold now and we don't know if it's going to rain or snow. Gretel replied, the carpenter told us the winter is coming and the weather tend to change without any warning. Ah, I see. He sipped the broth, is that why you asked me to make a makeshift stable for Holly? He earned a nod from the brunette, if it snowed, will it slow us down? A little, Snow said, that's if it don't snow too much. If it does, then I'll use Cage Bunshin and Kaden Jutsu to clear the path ahead of us. Naruto rubbed his chin thoughtfully. Won't it flood then? The ravenette pointed out. Ooh, that's a possibility. He furrowed his brows as he cupped his chin. I'll use Sweden Jutsu to move them out of the way, or use Storage Seal to absorb it up. Just use the shovels with clones to clear the way. Goldilocks scoffed, have finally snapped out from her Gold Madness episode. Oh, right, the Cage Bunshin can create extra tools as long as I hold it. Naruto gasped in realization, earn couple eye rolls from certain girls. Worry about it later when it happened, finish your dinner before it get colder. Gretel spoke up with a stern look as they went back to their dinner, she don't like it when someone waste foods or let it go cold. As everyone was preparing to go to bed, Snow was reading a book on bed until Rosie plop her chin on her shoulder. Snow, the redhead whispered. Yes, Rosie. Snow gave her a small smile. Let's give Naruto a good night kiss. Rosie smiled widely and the ravenette's face lit up red. KK kiss. The ravenette nearly squeaked. I I isn't it too soon. I mean, W we. Is it? The redhead leaned her head against the black haired girl's head gently. We have been traveling together for months and we already know almost everything about each other. T T true, Snow muttered with blush, B but still. Snow, I want you to be first one to give him good night kiss. Rosie said before she pout at her, and if you don't, I'll give him one first. Why why you're what? The blushing ravenette gasped with widened eyes. I will give him a kiss if you don't. The redhead sing song, and beside, we should let Naruto know how much we like him. After all, he's our true love. True love, Snow whispered softly, fidgeting with her hands. I'm turning in.
Naruto climbed up onto the bed with a yawn, night. NN Naruto. The ravenette called out as the said boy turned to her with a blink, GG good NN night. Good night, he smiled before snow press her lips on his lips firmly, caused his eyes to widen as his face burn up. It last two moments before she pull away with atomic red face. GG good night, snow repeated as she quickly dive under sheets to hide her embarrassment. When I said good night kiss, I was thinking of kissing his cheek. Rosie whispered to her with a beaming smile as the blushing ravenette almost squeaked in shock, but I like your idea. The redhead lift up to face the stunned blonde, Naruto, good night. She suddenly kissed Naruto on lips before she break apart with beaming smile, you have a soft lips. TTT thank. Naruto uttered out lamely, still stunned and the smiling redhead slip under the blankets next to the blushing ravenette. Good night, Naruto. Before he know it, Rapunzel gave him a peck on lips then Basilisa kiss him lightly on cheek and Goldilocks blindsided him with a hard and fast peck near the corner of his lips and the widened eyed boy with gaping mouth just stare at the blondes as they get in the bed. Slowly, Naruto turned to Gretel as she sit on chair to brush her hair down and she just arched her brow at him with passive look. What? Gretel said, do you want me to give you one too? Um, why yes. His mouth opened before he think it first, w wait, i. Okay. The brunette got up with a tiny yawn as she walk up to the bed before she give him a gentle kiss on his forehead, good night. With that, she get in the bed and the blushing boy blink rapidly at empty air before his head slowly turned to the girls. W w why did they kissed me and act like it's normal thing? Naruto tried his best to bring the blush down as he slowly get in the bed and it took him a long time until he finally fall asleep. He feel awkward sitting next to snow in front as the wagon went down the path and she also feel the same way, both fighting their blushes back while shyly avoid eye contact until one of them speak up. Naruto. Snow whispered timidly. Why yes. Naruto replied. CC can I do it a again tonight. The ravenette stuttered. K kiss you g good night. Oh, um, he can feel his face burning up again, why yes, he quickly waved his hands, w wait, I mean no, a, I mean yes, he stuttered before he take a deep breath as he scratched his head, um, why yeah, you can, I it's just, I'm not used to receive this much of attention and affection since I'm orphan in several circumstances. I understand. Snow squeezed his hand lightly, I grew up with a little affection because my mom passed away long time ago and my stepmother hate me for some reasons. What about your father? Naruto asked. Um, I don't know. She paused for a moment, I've never seen him often after he married my stepmother. Wah. Wow. He dropped his jaw, he can't comprehend the fact that someone can just ignore their family member and allow this happen to their children. Naruto decide to keep it to himself as he changed the topic, if, if you don't mind, see can I also do the same thing to you girls. Return it and all. Why yes, I don't mind, Snow blushed madly, a and I don't think others do. What does that make us now? Naruto asked, feeling very timid all of sudden and before the raven can say something, Rosie suddenly pop out from behind the flaps to throw her arms around their necks with beaming smile. Sweethearts. Rosie nuzzled their cheeks together before she pecked Naruto's cheek then Snow's cheek. S sweethearts. He blinked, um, like boyfriend and girlfriend. They stared at him weirdly, you know boyfriend and girlfriend as in couple. Still staring, don't they know what, boyfriend, and, girlfriend, mean here. LL lovers. Oh, yes. The redhead grinned as the ravenette blushed, you're our true love so let's do our best to keep everyone happy. Oh okay. Naruto paused as he blinked rapidly, wait, everyone. He never get any response as the giggling redhead disappear behind the flaps and the blushing ravenette just concentrating on the road. Did I just end up with two girlfriends or what? He also wonder if they were going too fast or if it's normal for people to be so forward in this country. And is it okay to have more than one girlfriend? He worried about it for a good amount of time until he decide to go along with it and see how it'll turn out, hopefully good. Naruto was looking through one of food crates for snacks in the back of the wagon until he feel it slow down to stop and he look up along with everyone else. Snow, why are we stopping? He called out curiously. There's a troll on bridge. Snow hollered back worriedly and it took the shinobi few moments to register it. 
A what? Naruto jogged up to the front to peek out to see a giant hairy creature with big ugly nose on and stone bridge as the creature drooled wickedly in front of a young baby goat. Little Billy Goat, all gobble, the troll snarled at the shivering goat. Rasengan, Ra what? The confusing troll barely look up before an orb smash into his nose and everything went dark after that. Oh my. The young goat gasped in awe as he watch a blonde human sending the scary troll flying in the sky until the creature vanish in a twinkle star before the boy land near him. Thank you, good sir, for saving me from this awful troll. My brothers will be very pleasant to not face him when they come here. He gallop across the bridge merrily. You're welcome. Naruto waved at the goat with a blink before he rubbed the back of his head. Huh, didn't know there's a goat summon. He shrugged his shoulders before he returned to the wagon. Hey, do monsters exist around here? He asked the girls with raised eyebrow. Yes, they're very real right next to giants, gnomes, elves, fairies and so on. Goldilocks shrugged casually. And witches. Rapunzel added, Ah, I remember seeing a unicorn once in the Lost Woods. Oh, he blinked owlishly, the world is bigger than he thought and it looks like he have many new things to learn about. Two hours later, it was time for a short break when they decide to stop at a clearing near a pond and they take a look around at scenery until Naruto noticed something in a distance. What's this place? He pointed to a stone castle. It's a castle. Snow replied. Really, it's a castle. Naruto looked at the building oddly. Huh, look different from these castles where I come from. What does the castles look like? Rosie asked him, the one from your homeland. The castles usually have many layers and each one have roofs. He tried his best to describe them, they usually are very tall because it's all stacking up in one tower, um, sometime they have more buildings near it. Oh, and they have statues on top like Golden Koi or Dragon for example. Sound interesting, Gretel muttered, maybe you can draw it to show us what it clearly look like tonight. I'll do that. Naruto nodded before he looked at the castle, are we going to visit this place or... In a way, the brunette hummed, we are going to a city near this castle but I don't think we can enter the palace. Not many kingdoms would allow a peasant to step in unless they have a reason to. Ah, gotcha. He rubbed the back of his neck, I'm gonna create dozen bunchens to work on Irio ninjutsu while I practice the Hira, is that a trapdoor? He pointed at the said trapdoor in the ground near the pond with weird look and everyone follow his line of sight to it. Yes, I believe that is a trapdoor. Gretel raised her eyebrow quizzically. That is so weird, I mean why would someone put it out in this opening? Naruto lift the trapdoor up to look inside, a ladder to deep hole greet him. I'm going to check it out. Be right back. Be careful. Snow said a little concern as the shinobi climbed down the hole and it take few minutes until he reached the bottom. What the? The shinobi muttered to himself as soon as he see a old wooden door and he knock it few time to test the sturdiness until he hear a voice behind the door. Little green maiden small, hopping here and there, hop to the door, and quickly see who is there. The voice spoke before the door creaking open and Naruto walked through on guard until he blink at the sight of a giant green toad surrounding by small toads and dozen boxes in a large chamber. What do you want? Oh, I found the trapdoor up there and was wondering what's down here. Naruto jabbed thumb over his shoulder, I don't know there was you guys down here, and can you please tell this pervy bastard you don't see me. He assumed them to be part of the toad clan. What do you want? The giant toad repeated, feeling a little confusing about the last part. Um, what do I want? He raised his eyebrow at the creature, a direction to home. The giant toad just croaked while staring at him blankly and it make his eyebrow twitching. I guess they don't know, just sitting around and wait to be summoning. He threw his hands up with a sarcasm tone, oh, how about a carpet and rugs? Vasilisa want pretty carpet for the wagons. The giant toad turned to a small young toad, little green maiden small, hopping here and there, hop quickly and bring me the great box here. The small toad bring a large box to the giant toad and the creature open it up to reveal an elegant carpet on top of several different rugs. The creatures look up to the blonde while he stare down at the box with a owlish blink. Oh, thank, Naruto muttered dumbly as he picked the box up, we'll put them to best use. What do you want? The giant toad croaked again. Wait, what else do I want? He raised his eyebrow at the creature oddly, um, no, I don't want any. What do you want? 
The giant toad cut him off with a croak and something bright catch the shinobi's eyes. Um, can you give me those rings? Naruto pointed to a small box filled with golden rings. Little green maiden small, hopping here and there, hop quick and bring me the small box here. The giant toad croaked to the same toad, who fetched the ring box. Thank. He picked the ring box to put it on top of the large box before he mumbled under his breath, you senile toad. What do you want? The giant toad croaked and Naruto was about to blow his gasket. Among the toads, please chose one end. I'm taking this toad with me. Naruto cut the giant toad off with annoying expression as he picked the same small toad before he walk out, by and thank you very much. The door swing closed and the toads croak at the door calmly. She shall be a beautiful woman. The giant toad finished. At the pond, the girls wait until Naruto come out from under the trapdoor and they notice the boxes in his arms with a small toad on his shoulder. What was down there? Rosie asked, what's in the boxes and why is there a toad? In order, there's a bunch of toads with one most annoying toad you ever meet. Naruto exhaled, the small box filled with rings and the big one have carpet with bunch of rugs. That earn a perk of interest from Goldilocks and Vasilisa, and this senile toad asked me to pick one of them so I took this toad, he gestured to the said creature before a giant smoke poof up around the toad all of sudden as he yelped out, wah. The smoke screen clear almost right away, the toad was gone and in its place a young girl saddling Naruto but she was quite unique. The young girl have short chin length dark green hair with two mucus like orbs, lying on red streak hair, on top of her head, amber eyes and thick small brows. What make her unique is her very smooth skin of green shades, her face and torso have tea green color, forest green color all way down her arms with some tea green color underneath, MSU green skin on her well developed legs with tea green color on inner thighs and her body have some pattern of dark green shades. She has toad like webbed hands and feet and an elongating tongue that poke out from her lip. Hello. The toad girl smiled down at him and Naruto quickly snap his head away from her with heavy blush. The reason. She wasn't wearing anything. H hi, CC can you please put something on? He stuttered back, fighting the urge to look back at her. Put what on? The toad girl tilted her head. CC come here. Snow grabbed the toad girl with red face along with several other girls as they dragged the confusing girl into the wagon, we need to get you in some clothes. Ooh, I like the dress. The toad girl swirled her floor-length dark green dress with long sleeves but it appeared to be clinging to her body, so sticky. Glad you like it. Naruto scratched his head as everyone gathered around the new girl, but who are you? I'm the toad you picked. The toad girl smiled, little green maiden small, remember? Wait, what? He blinked owlishly at her, you're this, toad. Did you transform? Is that an henge? A illusion? Yes, I transformed but it's not an illusion. The toad girl grabbed his hands to press them against her cheeks, see. Feel real, don't it? Why yeah, Naruto blinked at the feeling of smooth skin, and so sticky. How is this possible? Magic. The toad girl replied as if it's the answer to everything. Do you have a name? Rosie asked curiously. Lily. The toad girl smiled brightly. And what are you going to do now? Goldilocks asked her. Wherever Naruto is, I'm staying with him. Lily licked her right cheek. You're coming with us. Naruto looked at the nodding girl before he turned to the rest of the group. Um, guys. They have a very short discussion. The more the merrier. Snow said and almost everyone agreed with her. And I want to getting know her. Rapunzel clapped her hands with expecting expression. She have never met someone like Lily before. Ah, how vast is this world. She wasn't the only one to think it. Well then, the shinobi turned to the new member of the group, let's show you around then we'll set off. They show Lily inside the wagons before they went onto their travel. A feather float down onto the trapdoor hour later and a young man walk down the path until he find the feather then go down the hole. This young man will later return to the castle with nothing, which bring great disappointment to his father, the king, and two greedy princes joys. But to the greedy prince's shock, the king decided not to give his throne up and that will cause in conflict but that's in the near future and a story for another time. You sure don't waste time to put the carpet out. Naruto can't help but to chuckle as Vasilisa rolled the carpet across the floor between seats in the front wagon, how do you like the carpet? I like it. Vasilisa smoothed the carpet with her hands, it feel like silk. It's pretty. 
The carpet is red with gold trim and it have pattern of gold vines with leaves across the carpet. So are Z rugs. I can't wait to place them in Vardo and see which one suit it. She get up to face him, thank you for fetching me these rugs. You're welcome. He waved it off. May I become your lover? The young blonde asked him bluntly. Um, ask Rosie and Snow if they're okay with that. Naruto muttered after few moments of silence, he don't know how things work in relationship like his and what is acceptable or not in other societies. Okay, I will. Vasilisa nodded before she walk up to the front and he just scratch his head, why does he have a funny feeling that he dig himself into something? He didn't notice that several girls quietly moved to the front to listen into Vasilis's conversation with Rosie and Snow. About 30 minutes later, some commotion can be heard outside and Naruto peek out along with the girls to see crowds standing in front of the giant stone wall near the gate before they look up to see, is that a giant egg with legs and face. Naruto blinked rapidly at a rocking giant egg sitting on top of the wall with a cheery hum as it kick legs around, okay, that's on top of all bizarre things I have seen in my life. He wonder if it's jutsu, magic, blood limit, and specie or whatever it is. I don't know what can beat that, that, egg man, woman. It. It's egg man. Lily croaked. Sir, please come down. One of the guards called up to the rocking egg creature. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. The egg man sings merrily before he lost his balance with a shout, falling down as the crowd gasped in horror. Humpty Dumpty had a great F-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-
Snow stow the said item and stuff in metal bucket in the bottom shelf with a broom near the door in Vardo wagon after their dinner. That will make our nomadic lifestyle more easy. Yeah, and we even get other things like churn and presser. Rapunzel said as Vasilisa lay a fuzzy rug in front of bed, I'm very surprised that the other towns don't sell these things. I think it's because the other towns are small or poor that they can't sell things that make their life easy or provide for their family. Gretel checked the balance in a book at desk, adding and deducing gains and losses. That kinda makes sense. Naruto said as he put up curtains to cover the bed so it can block the lights from lantern and to give some privacy. It did feel like we bought a lot of things than usual. They bought a lot of clothes, foods, tools and many things that he can't remember. A grumble draws his attention to Goldilocks, who is lying flat eagle spread on floor. What's the matter, Goldilocks? He deadpanned, is it still about in? What's great about it? I mean, we have everything here, soft bed, shelter, tub. If we have a room in inn, we should have warm bath and toilet. Goldilocks stretch her arms up to the ceiling with a wine, warm water. We may have tubs but the water is lukewarm or cold. It's not just right. Not just right. Hot water, huh? Naruto rubbed his chin thoughtfully with squinted eyes, you know, I can slap some heating seals on tub. Bam, instant warm bath. Say what? The short-haired blonde lifted her head up to him with an owlish blink, heating seals. I created some heating tags from the second stage of Fuenjutsu and like its name, it work like an heater but powered by chakra. He said, if you want it, I can put couple tags on a tub then. Turn it on, it might take few minutes until the water's warm enough for you to get in. Goldilocks stared at him with widened eyes and dropped jaw, what? Will you put it on the first thing in morning? Goldilocks asked quietly. Hi, I will. Naruto replied lamely and the short-haired blonde turned her head to two certain girls. You know what? She spoke to Snow and Rosie, I'm joining you guys and sharing. Finally, you admit it. Rosie grinned from the bed, you do love him, you shy girl. I'm not shy. Goldilocks shouted with red face as she got up. Um, what's going on? He looked between them confusingly. Oh, everyone's your sweethearts now. The redhead smiled cheerily. Say what? Naruto's jaw hit the floor. Good night. Rosie pecked his lip and before the shinobi know it, the other girls follow it up as they go up to him before they get in the bed. Good night and sweet dreams. Snow kissed him. Night. Goldilocks kissed him hard. Spokoinoi Nachi. Vasilisa tipped up on her toes to kiss him. Night night. Rapunzel kissed him with a hug. Good night, mate. Lily surprised him with a deep kiss and Naruto swear he can feel her tongue coil a bit around the tip of his tongue before she break apart with a croaking giggle. Naruto was too stunned to do anything as he watched the girls disappear behind the bed curtain and he blinked slowly several times, slowly turned to Gretel, who's very focusing on the bookkeeping. How did I go from two girlfriends to seven girlfriends? Naruto wondered, is that how things normally go in this country? Plus, he just met Lily today. I'm done with the bookkeeping so I'm turning in now. Gretel put the book away then got up with small stretches as she turned to him. Good night, are you going to sleep? Nah, I'm gonna create some seals and studying fuenjutsu. Naruto replied, I'll be in about an hour. She gave him a nod, good night. He leaned forward to kiss the brunette on lips, causing her to froze still and he pull away to stare at her as her cheeks slowly turn rosy. Um, Gretel. Oh oh oh, I I be better t turn in now. Gretel uncharacteristically waved her hands frantically as the blush spread from her cheeks to whole face, gg good night, I l love, eek. She dashed into the bed and the shinobi blinked bewilderedly at her behavior. Okay, what he don't know is that when Rosie told him that everyone's his girlfriends, Gretel was not part of it because she view him as a close friend, until he kissed her. In the bed, the blushing brunette curled up on her side as she tried to calm her pounding heart down and she covered her face with hands. W what's wrong with me? T this kiss is just innocent because it's an Naruto, her eyes widened as she come to an conclusion, A am I in love with him? She sneak a glance over her shoulder to a opening gap in curtain to see Naruto dipping brush into ink bottle, oh, I am, she held hands over her chest as she turned back, maybe she'll considering joining this relationship. Yes, she should talk to the girls the first thing in the morning. Ah, how little does Naruto know is that the girls' decisions will lead to something bigger and may give him headaches. 
That is because in fairy tales, it's so easy for anyone to fall in love under any actions from kiss to rescue, mostly female. Poor, poor Naruto. It's a early morning when Gretel exit the Vardo wagon with thick shawl around her pajama and she inhales some fresh air in with groggily expression before she noticed Naruto finished his warm-up as he crossed his fingers. Cage Bunshin. He create hundreds of Bunshin before he point to the first group. I want you guys to work on chakra control, specifically the elemental control. His finger shifted to the second group, work on Fuenjutsu. He turned to the third group, Kaden Jutsu. He pointed again to the fourth group, we need to master Irio Ninjutsu, who know I might need it one day. He turned to the final group as he scratched his head, crap, I think I made too much of you guys, um, maybe we can start training with Bukijutsu and do some weapon mastery. Starting with sword or something else. The fifth group of clones just shrugged their shoulders, some of you guys will stay here in case if the girls need some morning training. I'll be focusing on mastering Horishin. Wait. Do I have to learn Irio Ninjutsu? One of the bunch and whined, No. I want to something cooler instead of this stupid medical crap. Too bad. Naruto huffed at his clone as Gretel raised her eyebrow behind him, You're with the medical squad so suck it up. No, 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 no. The clone dropped on his knees with clasped hands, Please switch me with someone else. Please, boss, please. He continued to complaining and pleading to his creator for a while. Ah. Uh, Fine, you sissy. The shinobi's eyebrow twitched as he glared down at the cheering clone, go trade place with Kaden's squad. Thank, boss. The cheering clone run to another group. Everyone, go. Naruto waved his bunshin off while rubbing his forehead as the groups moved out and he finally noticed the brunette. Morning, Gretel. Gee good morning, Naruto. She cleared her throat to calm herself down after remembered last night, may I ask you a question? Sure. He nodded. Is it normal for your clone to act out like that? Gretel gestured to the empty space, it's quite out of character. You once told us that all your clones are same like you in every way. Ah, yeah, I thought the same thing until I read the cage bunch and scroll again. Naruto scratched his head, turn out it's common for any cage bunch and to have their own personality if someone create this many clones. It's rare in a small group. He paused for a moment, which explained a lot of things if I think about it. He remember how he get into it with his clones in past and he never gave it a thought until now. No wonder why one want to gossip and other want to lazing around. Ah, interesting. She hummed before she shivers under a cold breeze, I'm going inside. Breakfast will be ready in 30 minutes. Got it. He gave her a thumb up over his shoulder as he jogged over to a clearing in a distance and the brunette entered the Vardo for warmth. That place looked perfect for training. A clone said to his group as they approach a field of roses, what weapon do you think we should focus on today? He held a scroll up, sword. Why not? The second clone walked over until he accidentally step a rose and there was a loud crack, following by a wet squish. Wah. He lift his foot up to look under it, ew. I think I step on a big fat bug. Whoa, what kind of bug can have this much blood? The third clone grimaced slightly at the sight of thick blood under the second sandal, some spider. Must be. The fourth clone shrugged as he walked until they hear something strange like, no. Before there was another weird sound of cracking and squishing and everyone look around at their surrounding in confusion. What the? He lift his foot up to see a blood glob, ew. Is this field filled with some kind of big fat bugs? Maybe we should change the location. The first clone said to everyone and they agreed as the group moved to another field. If they have take a close look in the rose bed, they should have seen some tiny human limbs twitching near the blood smears. Oh, woe tom thumb and thumbling. For they have been squished like insects. In other place, the clone was practicing a basic kaden jutsu as he blew fireball after fireball and he take a short break to rest his throat. Ah, why do we have to do kaden today? He grumbled as he went through some hand seals before he shot a fireball and something unexpected happened next. Oh, I have successfully tricked my master into disrobing, now I need to stop the king's car. A orange cat in boots leap out of nowhere before the creature lit up in blaze by the giant fireball, ah. The blazing cat ran around in circle with flaring arms as Naruto watch on with dropped jaw for several minutes before the creature plop over, completely burnt and dead. 
The clone slowly turned his head sideways few times before he quietly dig a hole then push the dead cat in along with its boots and push the dirt back in. He straightened himself up with hands behind his back and he walk away with an innocent whistle and shifty eyes. Boss can figure it out himself. Single quote. Somewhere a bit away, a poor nude man was forced to leave the cold river and run for cover while a royal carriage continue on without stops. Naruto prepare himself with the Horaishin Kanai after many tries and he throw it at a tree with all of his strength. The Kanai soar through the air until it stop, in Naruto's hand as he skidded across the field. Whoa! He barely keep his balance up before he look at the Kanai in his hand with rapid blinks then he celebrate loudly, yes. I did it. He jumped around, yes, 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 I did it. He laughed until his foot hit something and he looked down with a blink, is that a bottle? It's a long neck glass rounded bottle with cork and it look like it's filled with something. Wonder what's inside. Naruto picked it up then uncorked it to take a sniffle. Suddenly, the smokes erupt from the bottle and a giant spirit stretched his arms out with claws. Ooh, do you know what your wages are for having let me out? The spirit roared with awful voice, I must strange you for it. For I am the mighty Mercurius, the ghost. The shinobi shrieked in high pitch. What? Mercurius arched his brow, no, you fool, I'm a death. Ah. Naruto suddenly cut him off with a haymaker to jaw, sending him tumbling before he yanked dozen of tri-bladed kanai then scatter them everywhere and he vanish in yellow and orange flash. What sorcery is, the giant spirit uttered before he got smacked around by blurs as the speeding shinobi hit him with dozen jutsu and the spirit crashed through couple trees with high-pitched shriek. H how is this possible? How can this child hurt me? I'm invulnerable to all mortal weapons and magic. The reason why Naruto can harm the demon is because one of his gifts, it allow the outsider to harm any spirit, demons and invulnerable folks so they can defend themselves, don't forget that no harmful spells and attacks from certain species can affect the outsiders. In other word, the outsiders are truly invulnerable in the fable when it come to magic. That is one of the natural laws created by the fables in order to protect the outsiders in their journey to escape, and of course, Naruto don't know that. WWW wait, wait, Mercurius held his hand out to the boy as soon as the horizon ended, SS spare me. Spare me, good sir. I if you do, he pulled an little bag out, I all give you that. If you spread one end of this over a wound, it will heal, he pointed to left side of the bag then to other side, and if you rub steel or iron with the other end it will be changed into silver. The blonde stare at the demon in complete silence and the demon held a nervous grin, hoping that the boy is considering taking the treasure and sparing him. Like I believe this bullshit, ghost. Naruto vanish in the flash and the demon lost his smile with widened eyes as one-sided assault resumed. After one many high-speeded Rasengan to head, Mercurius face caved in before he explode in brimstone smoke and fire, signifying his death, but Naruto see it as a summoning dispel or sign of success exorcism. Oh thank Kami. He breathed out before he create dozen of Bunshin, Jigo collect the Horaishin Kanai. His clones obey him and the shinobi panted with hands on his knees until he spot the spirit's bag on the ground before he pick it up as he remember the ghost's words. I wonder if it's true, Naruto took a normal kanai out then rub it with the right side of the bag and he moved the bag away to stare at, pure silver kanai. Holy, this creepy ass ghost was telling the truth. He paused for a moment. A, I'll still beat this GGG ghost's ass. He decide to take the magic bag back with him. The girls stare at Silver Bowl in silence before Gretel make a small cut on her hand then cover it with left side of the bag and she pull her hand out to see unblemished palm. You have a quite interesting morning. Gretel said to Naruto as she hang the bag on the hinge of the shelf while everyone look up to him, anything else. Um. Naruto sweated as he had a flashback of screaming cat on fire ran around in circle, number. Nothing else at all. Just that GGG ghost and that I finally mastered Horaishin. Congratulation on mastering your technique. Snow handed him a bowl of porridge, what will you do next? I'm thinking of creating a Horaishin mark and put them on wagons, just in case of emergency or if I need to get back in no time. He rubbed his chin, he'll leave the Horaishin training to his clones from now on. That's smart, the ravenette said. Yeah, Naruto took a spoonful of porridge, can I see the map? I want to know where we are right now. 
Snow give him the map with a nod and he study it until he notice something that puzzle him. Um, what's this icon? He pointed to a blocky icon on map. The reason why he asked about it is because the map has many said icon all over the map. It's meant to resemble castle and kingdom. Gretel explained. Oh, the humming shinobi checked the map again and everyone finished their breakfast up before they can get ready to set off. The group reach a small town within two days and they was about to pass through without stop since the sun haven't reached its peak yet, but a certain person tried to stop them. Wait, everyone, wait. Goldilocks suddenly shook Snow's and Gretel's shoulders from behind as the said girls sat at the driver's seat before she point to their right, stop here for a minute. The girls followed Goldilocks pointing fingers direction as everyone else peek out too. Why do you want to look at bunch of wagons? Naruto asked the short-haired blonde oddly. There are many different kinds of wagons parking near in barn and an elderly man was lazing on a picket sign that read, for sale. Not look at, buy them. Goldilocks replied, to be specific, the box ones. She pointed at a wooden boxcar wagon with door in front. You can put them in your storage scroll things. Why should we want to have these boxy wagons? He furrowed his brows with a puzzling frown. So we can have place to take bath in and to turn one into a giant closet for the clothes that you have in clothing scroll. The short-haired blonde replied, the season is going to change and I don't want to take a bath out in rain or snow. She rambled a bit about random stuff relating to wagons for a while until she finally get cut off by her boyfriend. I can understand the first part but, Naruto sweat dropped with a deadpan expression, why should we turn one into a clothing wagon? That's stupid. She's right, we should buy the wagons. Gretel suddenly speak up while cupping her chin with index finger. She's right. He blinked. I'm right. Goldilocks blinked, not expected her to take her side before she puff her chest up. I mean, I know I am. We're going to have a clothing wagon. Naruto muttered. No, a bathing wagon. The brunette said, a box wagon can give us a better shelter in winter while we take baths. Not just that, the box wagon tend to be empty so that allow us to turn them into anything that benefit us. She looked to the shinobi, remember what we discussed the other day about this greenhouse, we can turn one into a mobile greenhouse and see if it work. Oh, we can use one as a livestock or stable wagon. Snow added and the brunette nodded as they stopped to step down. Excuse me, how much? Gretel approached the old man. A, hey, it depend on the wagon. The old man said. You mishear me, the brunette said with a glint in her eyes, how much for all wagons you have here. The old man's eyes just widened at her with arched brows. Wow, Gretel, you're pro at haggling. Naruto don't know how long he have been staring at the said girl with dropped jaw since they leave the town. 200 silver, he gestured to a black shire horse that walks next to Holly, and you even got us a horse for free. He was very happy to give us Jack for free after we clean him out. Gretel brushed it off like it's nothing, although an amused glint can be seen in her eyes. But is it still good idea to buy all wagons anyway? He asked out of curiosity. It never hurts to be prepared for any situations. The brunette counted up with her fingers, starting with thumb first. What if a wagon get damaged like fall into a deep ditch, get destroyed, fall off mountainside or its condition become worse as seasons change and make our Vardo wagon unsuitable to live in? There's a good chance that a witch will curse a wagon to disappear, who know? Oh, huh, I've never thought about that, Naruto scratched his head as he glanced at the wagon scrolls in a chest under the leading wagon's bench, but seriously, a clothing wagon. We're not, Gretel trailed off as he gestured to Goldilocks, who was laughing her head off about clothing wagon and many outfits to try on without any hassle, never mind. She sighed wearily with flat expression, at least we can decorate and turn wagons to whatever we want it to be then have you summon and seal them. Yeah, as long as it's not greenhouse or livestock wagons. He replied, since greenhouse require time and growth while storage scroll can't and it also can't seal living beings, he paused for a moment with a scrunched up face, can it? If it does, I'm very certain that livestock and all living beings will lose their sanity from trapped in a time space. The brunette twirled her hand questioningly, limbo. Oh, is it possible to restore their brains? Rapunzel asked while she wrapped gauze wrapping around Rosie's forehead for practice. Um, Naruto rubbed his chin, I don't know. Let's find a wild animal and. No, Naruto. 
Gretel cut him off with a deadpan expression as if she knows where his mind was going to, we are not going to do that. He pouted childishly, which earned an eye roll from her. Oh, I just realized something. Rosie lay her head on the Jenin's laps as she lay on the bench, if we're going to have a clothing wagon, do we need to build walls to divide our clothes or just put up long poles overhead to hang them and build dressers? Oh, do we have wardrobes? We'll figure it out when we set the clothing wagon up. He ran his hand through her red hair, massage her scalp to her happiness. That's one of what couples do, right? Naruto wondered. And bathing wagon. The redhead nuzzled his thighs, are we going to figure it out too? Ah, this one is pretty easy. Naruto think about it, we can build stalls on both sides, starting in back and work up to front, then put curtains up, but we only have like three bathtubs, right? Right, Gretel confirmed. So that will leave us with three stalls and a huge space. He rubbed his chin. Then we could buy a dozen of bathtubs to fill it up. Rosie grinned. Yeah, Naruto hummed. There's eight of them and three bathtubs so he better remember to buy some tubs as soon as they reach another villages, along with wardrobes and dressers, Kami, they're going to have a clothing wagon and that is so weird for him. Oh, he realized something as he turned to the brunette, Gretel, are the money different in regions? She looked at him questioningly for more clear explanation, the prices. In one town, some stuff cost less while the other town charge more. Um, like, a table cost 2 silver and another table cost 10 silver, yet they're same. Ah, uh, yes, it varies in regions. Gretel nodded, there are some places that don't accept copper because they're not valuable and demand more silver. She tapped her chin, I once hear a rumor that there are some place that value coppers more than gold and will take 10 copper coins in equal of 1 gold. 5 copper for 1 gold. Goldilocks whipped her head to her with dropped jaw, that's insane. Like I said, it's a rumor so I don't know if it's true or not. The brunette shrugged. I hope it's really a rumor because I can't think of any place that treats gold as cheap back home. Naruto wondered to himself with a head shake. A tortoise crawled down the path with half-lidded eyes and the creature was smiling as he steadily make his pace, until someone suddenly pick him up. Hey, little fella, you're going the wrong way. Naruto carried the tortoise to a river before he gently tossed the creature in the water, here you go. No, the R-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-
I don't want you and everyone to get hurt badly. I know it can't be helped but still. He agreed with her by nod his head as she patch him up over and over before she finally speak up after few minutes, Naruto, I don't know what sweethearts do together. I mean, what people do for courtship and other things. I'm very inexperienced, she sucked her lower lip in for a moment, how do I keep everyone happy? I. I get it. Naruto scratched his head sheepishly with one good hand, I'm very new to whole thing and I'm pretty sure everyone here feel this way too. The best thing we can do is winging it, getting know each other more and maybe go on few dates. Date. She gave him a odd look, do you not know today's date? She tilted her head with a hum, maybe we should get in calendar. No, no, not this kind of date. He said before he scratch his cheek, you know, we do need calendar, no, wait. He waved it away, I mean, date as in date date. She stared blankly at him, oh, is there a different word for it here? Um, when two people go out and enjoy something together for some time, courting, right? Oh, yes, it's court. Rapunzel hummed, but date sound little better than court for some reason. But I think we already cover the whole, knowing each other. She does have point there, maybe we should get calendar and set up dates. Until we're, winging it, did I use it right? Yeah, you did. Naruto nodded, we'll figure it out later. The long-haired blonde nodded at that before they chat a bit. They have one more hour left before they leave so they start to have some lunch and the genin look over his shoulder to check on his bunchons until he notice something. Hey, you. He pointed to a clone in distance, what are you doing with planting pot? What does it look like? The clone hollered as he dropped something inside the pot from a small bag, I'm planting a bean here. You idiot, we're not supposed to plant anything until later. Naruto shouted, and Bean. Really? Do you know how long it'll take? You idiot. Fuck you, boss. The Bunshin shouted back as he poured the water in the pot, I can do whatever I want. As soon as he finished his sentence, there was an sudden earthquake before giant stock shot up from the shattering pot to beyond the sky as it take the screaming clone up. I have so fucking much to live f o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o r. What the fuck? Naruto looked up with gobsmacked face and other girls also looked shocked by the sudden growth of beanstalk. Holy. Goldilocks nearly choked on her fork. Oh. Lily croaked. Oh my. Snow gasped. Cool. Rosie whistled, drawing some stares from the other. What? It's not every day you see a magical giant plant shot up in one day. Magic. Gretel whipped her head to the lying bag near the base of beanstalk. Naruto's clone was planting it from this bag. It's a bag of magic beans. The genin gasped in horror, if we had planted it in the greenhouse wagon later, he'd picture a wagon break apart as the giant stock erupt along with screaming people, it's really good thing that his cage bunchin was acting out early or everything will be destroyed in the near future, want me to burn this bag. Seal it and label it. The brunette replied without missing a beat and he obey her right away, tossing the said scroll in a chest in passenger wagon. What should we do about this beanstalk? Naruto asked before his head snapped up to the sky with widened eyes, what the hell? What is it? Snow asked him. The memories of my cage bunchin just came back to me just now. On top of this beanstalk, th there's a giant castle on land, he slowly pointed up to the towering stock weirdly, on a cloud. Like a floating island, Rapunzel squirted her eyes up to the sky with everyone. In giant castle, Snow asked somewhat nervously, when you say it's giant, is it human size or, size for giant? Um, Naruto recalled the memory, it looks pretty giant with everything, it was like 50 foot tall or something. Giant. Gretel gasped frighteningly. Is giant bad? He asked them curiously. Most giants are man-eater and they are more formidable. The Ravenette answered nervously, it takes entire army of a kingdom to take one down. They can be reasonable with, Gretel added, but they're very short-tempered and hold grudges for a long time. You said most, is there some good giants? Naruto looked up the beanstalk. Yes, rarely. Snow gulped and the shinobi stare at it for a while until he make up his mind. I'm going up there and check it out. He said to everyone's worries, don't worry, it'll be fine. It looks very abandoned because it's in ruin. But what if it's not? Lily asked. Well, let's hope it's a home of a friendly giant. Naruto scratched his head before he taken Horishin Kanai out to give it to the Ravenette, hold on to it. 
If it's an emergency, stab it in ground and I'll be back in a flash. Understand. The Ravenette nodded worriedly and the shinobi make several cage bunchin to stay behind before he climb up the beanstalk, which is easy thanks to his shinobi training as he ran up with several high leaps in between. I hope he'll be okay. As too. Rosie nodded worryingly. It take Naruto 15 minutes to reach the top of the beanstalk and he take the sight of giant building in with some awe. Wow, that is so bizarre and awesome at same time. He ran up to the front door and his jaw drop as soon as he reach it, the door is like 100 foot tall to him and he feel like an ant compared to it. Naruto walk through the gap between the door and doorway until he carefully peek inside to see a foyer. This place look empty. He glanced around at dust and giant cobwebs in ceiling and he wander around in stealth mode. He have no idea where to go now until he hear a loud honking noise and some music near a giant doorway. What was that? Naruto followed the sound into a room, discovering it to be in kitchen and the sounds was coming from top of the giant table. He take a glance around to make sure it's clear before he climb up the table leg with chakra until the genin reach the top and the blonde quietly peek over to see a normal sized goose in nest next to human sized golden harp and a giant bag the size of average man. Naruto glance around again before he get on the top and walk toward them to get a close look. The white goose looks like, just any normal goose. He turned to the golden harp, it have a golden figurehead of a young woman in gown with her, wavy hair, up in chignon hairstyle. Wow, it looks so lifelike. The figurehead's eyes suddenly spring open. Oh, a human. The golden harp smiled, causing the genin to fall on his back with a high-pitched scream. Oh. My apologies, I don't mean to startle you. WWW what are you? Naruto panted heavily while he clutched his chest, oh 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 one of these magical species or. I'm a magical harp, of course. The animated figurehead smiled kindly and the goose honked loudly with flapping wings, drawing the genin's attention for a moment and he noticed something else. Is that a solid gold egg? He gawked at shiny smooth gold egg under the goose, did this goose just lay a gold egg? Yes, once a day. The living harp nodded once. That is getting weird and weird. Naruto kept gawked at them before he decided to distract himself with something else. Um, what's in this bag over here? Gold. The figurehead replied and the genin's eyes nearly pop out. How big are gold inside it? Human, did you break in here to take us? Oh, no, no, I thought this place was abandoned and I was checking around. The genin waved his hands with heavy sweats, now I think about it, why did I come up here in first place? I'm not going to steal the gold and kidnap you too. Please don't tell whoever live here. No, no, I'm asking you to rescue us and take this bag of gold because we are, stolen goods. The harp shook her head softly, finding some amusement in this human's antic. Wait, someone stole you. Naruto blinked rapidly. Yes, a greedy giant who's quite vexed that he can't go down anymore since he lost his bag of magic beans long time ago. The figurehead frowned. Oh, I see, he glanced between the goose and the giant bag, do you know who the original owners are? Yes and no. The harp hummed, it sound like a tune to him. I do not know whose gold in bag belong to and I'm very certain that the owners are dead. For the goose's owner. He was eaten by the giant and my owners, I believe they have passed away because many years have been passed. She don't know how long she have been up here for but it feel like a century to her. If you take us, we all will belong to you. Is that okay? Naruto asked a little unsure and she nodded few times to ease his concerns. Well, alright then. He shrugged his shoulders as he take and scroll out to seal the giant bag because he's not going to carry it on his back. Oh, amazing. She gasped in awe, I do not know you're a sorcerer. I'm not sorcerer, I'm shinobi. He tucked the honking goose under right armpit and his left arm wrap around the figurehead's waist, find her to be very light when he lift her up. Now, they suddenly hear a booming voice. Fee fi fo fum. They looked up to see a giant dirty man stomped into the kitchen, I smell the blood of an, he smelled the air again with confused expression, Japanese man. I know the smell of Japanese man's blood but it's different, mixed blood. Ah, bah, he waved it off with a grunt, be he alive, or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Cage Bunshin. Naruto spammed many clones to distract the giant and the Bunshin leap high in air to the giant man's surprise as he make a break for it with his haul. Now he know it's a evil giant, he won't feel bad about stealing and attacking the homeowner. 
CHODAMA Rasengan. The giant's eyes widened farther when many Bunshin worked together to create barrage of giant spiraling orbs. Why does the greedy giant have a fun feeling that it won't end well for him? With the original genin, Naruto ran out of the castle with a victorious cry as he ran to the beanstalk and he never looked back when the left side of the castle exploded outward with roaring storm of smokes and dusts while the screaming giant flew out with bloody face to who know where. Naruto jumped then slide down the beanstalk with his chakra enchanted feet and he reached the ground in flat time to the girl's surprise. Naruto, you're back already. Snow gasped, it only has been about 30 minutes, and you bring something back too. Hold on for one second. Naruto quickly put the goose and heart down before he ran back to the base of the beanstalk as he makes some hand seal, futon, shinkaha. He launched dozen wind blades that cut through the beanstalk like it was nothing and it fall across the left field far away from the trail. Phew. He turned back to the confused girls, sorry, turn out it wasn't abandoned and there's a giant but it's okay, I took care of it. He wasn't really tough and there's no way for him to get down forever. I I see, the ravenette and everyone turned their heads to stare at the direction of fallen beanstalk, it's good thing that there isn't any towns for miles in this direction. Anyway, you brought a goose and a gold harp back. Goldilocks looked at the said animal and item, is that all? Ah, uh, no, he also brought a bag of gold. The living harp smiled to the gawking girl and the short-haired blonde turned her head to the group weirdly as if she wasn't seeing things before they all turned to the boy. By the way, this goose over there lay a golden egg once a day. Naruto pointed to the honking goose and the girls continued to give him strange looks. A boy named Jack was pulling a cow by rope down a path and he was humming a merry tune, before the giant smashed down on them with a booming crash, then the beanstalk crashed down on them with another booming quake. All three died under the beanstalk in one swoop. Since you don't have name, how does Lyra sound? Rapunzel asked as they rode with the living harp and the goose was sitting in an empty crate. Oh, that sound like a perfect name for ol' me. The living harp smiled warmly, you shall call me Lyra. And she'll be called Goldie. Goldilocks poked the goose and she pulled her finger back before the creature get a chance to bit her with angry honk. Yikes, someone don't like to be poked. Ah, she have bad experience with poking because this awful giant kept poking and poking her every day to demand for more gold eggs. Lyra shook her head sadly before her expression brighten up, but these days are long behind us now. Indeed, Snow commented from the driver's seat with Vasilisa. In this scroll is a bag of gold and you say it's bigger as a man. Gretel examined the said scroll in her left hand gingerly, big as in height. Yeah. Naruto scratched his head, it's huge and I don't know how heavy it'll be until we get to our next stop. Ah, I'm looking forward to it. The brunette hummed, that is going to be very common, isn't it? Naruto coming back with treasures and strange things. She has no idea how right she is in future. It took several hours until they reached their next stop at a wide clearing and Naruto have to look through the wagon scroll to unseal three boxcar wagons then take the giant bag out. Wow, it's huge. Lily gasped as the girls looked shocked by the size of the bag before she press herself against it with stretching out arms, and lumpy. Should I untie it from top or cut it open? Naruto asked. Cut it open. Gretel answered, we can reuse the bag, although I don't know what we can do with a giant rope. Get it. The genin make a long cut with kanai and a river of gold coins, some nuggets can be seen, slide out in a growing pile to everyone's amazement. Gold. Goldilocks throw herself on the pile to roll around with crazed laughter, causing almost everyone to deadpan with sweat drops. Naruto, can you make clones to help me sort through them and put 500 gold coins per bag? The brunette asked him and he confirmed it by create dozens of cage bunshin. I shall fetch Z scissor to cut Z bag into smaller bags. Vasilisa went to get the said item. And we'll hold Goldilocks back. Rapunzel pulled Lily and Rosie along as they grabbed the spoiled girl back. Snow has gone to tend to the horses and goose. If anyone need me, I'm going to inspecting inside these box wagons and draw out the plans. Naruto said over his shoulder as he climbed into the first box wagon that have door in front with blank papers in his hand and he scanned the interior, it's big enough to fit 50 people in with some spaces. Hmm, that will be a bathing wagon. He scratched top of his ear with pencil before he draw into the first place, let's put in bench in back so someone can wait for their turn, 
stalls on both sides, oh, curtains with few inches above the floor so it won't get wet. What should go in stalls beside bathtubs? He scratched his chin thoughtfully, hooks for hanging, small bench to sit down, damn bumpers. After few minutes of looking around, Naruto walk out and into another box wagon that have wide door on one side before he look around again. Um, maybe we can put animals in here.